anything. <laughs> oh man, those poor listeners gotta look, or those poor viewers have to look at me. <clears throat> that is actually a temptation just for the target masters, I gotta say. Huh? Oh, the uh, diecast link to the uh, the uh, Sparkle Seeker set is uh, down. Fifteen. Oh. Yeah, fifteen. <laughs> I'm just I'm sure I have people who need target masters that I that do not currently have them so I'm just yeah kind probably of, kind of thinking about that I mean if you want a you know troop builder yeah and, and yeah if you want something to take up colors. space on the shelf yeah yeah <laughs> I know you have so much so much um you know open room oh yes <laughs> to display things I just thought it was interesting because I, uh, I saw the price. I was actually looking to see Cannonball is the only one I didn't pre-order, mm -hmm. but I'm sure he'll be easy to find in the store when these things any actually of them, show up. Any of them should be easy oh, yeah. to find. Yeah. Like Filch, I suspect, only sold out on pre-orders because probably it's a lower allocation because it's such an obscure character. Comparatively speaking, I guess. Yeah. None of these are really like any kind of headliners, but um No. I mean the number one for me is Ferric, just because I like the colors I like. Yes, and that's going to be a Voyager shipped in solid pack cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that for at least a year. Probably longer. Hi Don. We're live yes. already, so Okay, good. Just yeah, just fair warning. Yeah, last also, week I was. Also, you're rescuing our our uh, live audience from having to look solely at diecast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned I mentioned in the chat a little topic for them to research if they want to. Vampires. Hey Don, did you take something off your wish list? I mean, somebody could. What do something. you think? <laughs> Take a wild freaking guess. Don, I was going on there to to purchase one, and it was gone. Uh, I mean, you know where Don lives. If you want to buy him something, just buy it and send it to him manually. Yeah, that's more work, though. Not helping. I'm, I am exactly as helpful as I'm trying to be, Don. <laughs> Which is not. <laughs> that's a matter of opinion. Yeah, Rob, I was going to say last last Wednesday, I was actually in Baltimore or I was ah. traveling down to Baltimore and I had family in that area that I haven't seen in like a while. Mm -hmm. It's actually my wife's side of the family, um, but they have like two dogs and everything and I've been wanting to see them. And because I had to work down in that area anyway, I was like, hey, let me stop by. I can see the, do you know, spend time with you guys, see the, meet the dogs, all that stuff. So that's why I wasn't on the show mm -hmm. uh, last week. And then Thursday, I did the shop training and then I drove back and I ended up driving back over that bridge that collapsed. Oh, boy. And I was like, yeah, I got to go down there again because they have a second shop. Um, in Randall's town, does that sound familiar? Yeah, I, I have a rough idea of where that is. Okay, I was in Hunting Town because it, it's weird. Everyone's like Huntington, no, I'm like Hunting Town. So I was in Hunting Hunting Town last time, which was right by Prince Frederick, and then I probably need to go back down. I was just talking to the to the guy and I was like I was like I hope it doesn't want to take me over that bridge since it's not there anymore yeah <laughs> I'm if... sure there's another way around yeah yeah, yeah. I'm sure ways will redirect me but uh -huh. I just know coming home I took that bridge yeah I'm um, just you know best I can tell you is uh, you know not just because of traffic but because of the of the you know like route You'll probably end up having to take it will probably take you longer to get home from, you know, if, if you would have gone over the key bridge. Yeah, well, plus the excess traffic that now has to go through the tunnel, because I really don't 
other than the tunnel, is there really another way to go? Um, you can fly around. I mean, I mean, yeah, around is about the only other way I know of. So, like I said, that's you know that uh, for for things that do not fit in the harbor harbor tunnel, which uh, it is going to include like trucks and things that that is going to put a lot of extra time on transit oh yeah uh-huh. to, to go around it it takes like an extra couple hours mm-hmm. yeah so that's that is going to be a mess for a very long time yeah, yeah many cause... carriers asking if the baltimore bridge is the i-95 one i don't remember i don't, I don't know if I don't it's drive, on 95 so. uh, uh 695 i think Ah, uh, yeah, six ninety five. Okay. okay. Also, hi Matt. Hello. We were not ignoring you. Rob and Diecast were just dominating the conversation. Mostly Diecast. <laughs> Rob, Rob is innocent and blameless in all things. Sorry, <laughs> we were talking about the bridge. <laughs> I know. I've been here. I was just there. Well, last week. Well, uh, you picked the right week, obviously. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, it's terrible about the people who got caught in that, but it if if the bridge had actually been, like, open to traffic at the time, it could have been much, much worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was it all just, like, workers who got lost with when that collapsed now they're yeah. saying there was two cars and a and a tanker that was on it as well i'm i'm not sure about that there have been uh, some reports go uh going around that are not accurate and i think the one with the tanker involved may have been one of those ah uh, La- last uh last i heard from like the the local local news and, and the like official city sources is that there were Eight, I believe eight people on the bridge, all construction workers. Um, I think uh, one of them, I think at least one of them survived. They just found uh, two of the bodies. Yeah. And, you know, the rest is uh, still, you know, not known for sure. Yeah, I know there were six missing, but I haven't heard any updates since yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, alas, I heard they were like all construction workers who uh, uh, had come here from other countries to to do this work. And yeah, they just, uh, you know, like I said, only people on the bridge, you know, still terrible, but could have been far more terrible. Yeah, it sounds like uh, the emergency services and everything really got into gear once the SOS came through. They had four minutes to straight to, to get people off and. They did, so that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, this all, you know, like I said, this all uh, could have been a lot worse. And uh, just unfortunately, since the, uh, since they seem to have lost control of the ship, uh, there is absolutely nothing that could have been done because uh, that ship is basically, uh, you know, basically a skyscraper laying on its size, aside in terms of mass. Yeah, the way I heard it described, it was at, at, at its size and the, the mass and the volume at the, the speed it's going, even though it's going very slow. It was still like 500 bunker bombs going mm-hmm. off at once. The amount yeah, of so energy. It's- yeah, like I, I think about, uh, I think about like fifty thousand pounds of explosive would have been what it took to stop the thing before it hit the bridge. So yeah, there's, there's maybe more, but yeah, they're just like, well, you know, like momentum's I said, a hell of a drug. It is, you know, ship that size, they're, they're, you know, once you lose control of it, you've lost control of it. Holy yeah, shit! Like a train. Uh, yeah, that's what Biden said he used to take over that bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no train tracks on that bridge. <laughs> to be, uh, you know, I'm sure there was a bridge there before the current one. He may have been on that one for all that I one, know. That one was built in 77. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, wonder how long it's going to take to build a 
new bridge a long time a long time that's yeah, what i, I imagine because they yeah. can't even fix 95 near me in a reasonable amount of time i, I can't mean, even even if even if they try to like you know put a rush on it while you know addressing necessary safety and design and construction it's probably going to be i would guess conservatively five years before there would be a usable bridge back up there since uh, Angel works and uh, used to work in construction, and she said, you know, since she has some knowledge of all the various permits and procedures and things that would be necessary for something like this, she is uh, putting it probably closer to 10. Okay. No well, the closest concept. bridge I can think of that has recently been, like, they built a brand new bridge was the Tappan Zee Bridge. Tappan Zee? Is that right? I think it's the Tappan Zee Bridge that goes from new york to connecticut mm -hmm. or maybe it goes from new york to another part of new york and then it goes into connecticut but it's a very it's it's a pretty big bridge it's very big and uh they recently built a brand new one right next to it and then tore the other one down i don't know how long that took though yeah i mean i i imagine since this is like a major you know, a major shipping lane for the largest uh, uh, port on the coast. It is going to be, you know, a fairly high priority. But also, I, you know, it's one of those things you really don't want them to rush too much. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're you know, it's an art to bridges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is. The Tappan Zee Bridge. 2017 to present so sort of newly constructed bridge i'm gonna find the information oh okay so the process to replace the bridge kicked off in 2012 uh And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it took about five to six years. Okay. I, I, I will say that having, you know, crossed that bridge a few times myself, it was always kind of spooky because it is just, you know, way, way up in the air over nothing or was. And uh, yeah. Well, that way they didn't have to have a drawbridge. Mm -hmm. You make it tall enough that you don't have to worry about that. So you don't have to stop traffic all the time. Like that's a pain in the butt around right. me. Um, because, you know, obviously Delaware river goes down to the Philadelphia port mm -hmm. and we have a couple low bridges that actually have a drawbridge and it is a nightmare when the bridge has to open. Hey Rob, I'm of course not familiar with that area at all. Uh, is that uh, is that expanse of water something that ferries could not be decently used to try to take some of the traffic congestion off the alternative rail? I mean, it's a shipping lane. You wouldn't want to run ferries back and forth across that. Okay. Yeah, I, I and just... plus it's about thirty thousand cars a day, so I don't <laughs> that, know. That's a lot of ferries. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's just what I was asking. Is that would that be some kind of assistance? If possible, I, again, I don't, I didn't know the, the area, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a shipping lane connected to like the, the largest port on the coast. So it is, you know, any, that, that's anything from interstate 95. Yep. And uh, yeah. And anything they try to do, I suspect uh, other than build another bridge is going to be a logistical nightmare, but they're going to have to go through some of those nightmares anyway, for as long as it's going to take to build the bridge. So it's, you know, I, I, I mean, it's just a mess. I don't have anything more uh, more insightful to say about it than that, unfortunately. It's it's interesting. Uh, not not the devastation part, but it'll be interesting to see how long it takes and probably what they would do is tear the rest of the bridge down since it was built yeah, so that's long where ago you have to start just, well, just gonna, apparently it leaves a bridge up just to, to study it a, a new bridge with me 
be have to be diverted or something. From what I hear, it your was, volume's low. I couldn't even really hear you. I can He's also talking hardly, quiet. I can also hardly talk right now. Sorry. Uh, um, he I, said they were leaving the old structure of the study and a new bridge to have the traffic like diverted off to wherever they yeah. lay the new one down. Yeah. Am I coming through okay now? Yeah. 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 It it was a diecast problem. I could hear you just fine. No, I mean I was I was I, speaking lowly. I, I'm having some difficulty speaking right now. Yeah, I, I thought I thought volume was a little low when I first got here too. So not exclusively a diecast thing. Also, I hear I mean Chester is flipping out right now. So mm, I'm muting. Dog. Yeah, that breaks my heart. That's what what's wrong with Chester? Nothing. His brother Charlie um, was fine until Monday night. He couldn't walk. Then the next morning we took him to the vet, found that there was a tumor growing on his spine. We had to put him down. Yeah, we went through um, very much the same thing with the the doctor we had through the 90s. Like she was she was getting old and, you know, slowing down, but like she was still like mobile and happy and everything. And then until she one, wasn't one evening yeah she stopped being able to get up and the next morning when i woke up my dad told me that you know he had to you know take her first thing in the morning and let her go you know he was um in really great spirits and everything and uh even up to the last minute uh the vet loves him the vet office loves him uh especially one of the tech there all text there always she always asked asked about him and everything and she said she loved on him all day and he was in just like great spirits up until the second they did it so mm -hmm. yeah but jared said r.i.p chester chester's alive that chester's his brother from the same letter charlie is the one that passed but you did you did the right thing because you probably saved him from a lot of pain Oh yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if there's even any pain. He just can't. He couldn't move, and it was yeah, like the the, the tumor probably would have probably is probably cancer, mm -hmm, and yeah. there probably would have been pain. But like right now, he wasn't in pain, which is optimal. He just uh, he wasn't eating, wasn't anything, and yeah. Well, that's a sign that there's there's some sort of pain or discomfort going on. So. You did the right thing. You're good, Jerry. And and I know I'm I'm saying that over and over again, but I, like I needed to hear that over and over again when I had to make the decision to put mine down. Yeah, it's a really hard it, thing. Yeah, you, you question yourself. Like, did I do the right I thing? Oh, I I don't question it. So the thing is, my experience with Max, who Max has been dead for three years now. Um, four years, four years, and he was only seven, and I'm still haunted by that. Um, we, I should have let him go. Uh, I didn't, and he wasted away to nothing. Um, I should have made that choice for him, but like the vet was like, he said like, hey, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope, and with that hope went thousands of dollars too. So it's not the same vet. <laughs> that's that's understandable. Mm -hmm. What are you eating? A slush puppy. Oh, okay. So, um, I actually, the morning Max died, I actually had a doctor's appointment scheduled for him at my current vet for a second opinion. So, and uh, he had never been there, I'd never been to that vet before. And I said, hey, I can't go. Um, I mean, he passed. And they, you know, obviously, so since apologetic and everything, or condolences, they sent me a beautiful note, <clears throat> you know, had never been there, sh sharing their condolences. And then his current vet, his actual vet, they did the same thing. And the vet who had been, I don't want to say milking, because milking is not the right word, but like milking, he, he said, so sorry, you know, I feel so sorry that he died. He lived a long life. And I'm like, he was seven. He was, like, he was like, he had seven or eight years, most likely. Yeah, especially because he was a smaller animal. He was a small dog, usually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Charlie and Chester are larger dogs, you know, 12, 13, 14 years. Um, Charlie was a great dog, and, you know, it sucks. But now I'm just worried about Chester. 
Yeah. Well, you know, he's going through separation anxiety right now because he always had Charlie mm-hmm. there. They spent even though they were life. jerks and fought every once in a while, no, like every like two or three years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was it was vicious too. Um, yeah. Like they were separated like that time that Char Chester really screwed up Charlie. Like really, he was he was in bad shape, so he's in the hospital for about two weeks at that point. Charlie has cost me tens of thousands of dollars over the year years. He was a very expensive dog that I traded for two cats. <laughs> I traded my friend Ricky. His daughter wanted cats. I had two stray kittens that came to live with us that we were trying to rehome. And I wanted a dog, so they traded dog. They traded two puppies for two kittens. How was uh, Jolana? Good. I mean, I, you, you've been there with me. I mostly just hang out in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, so it's a different facility, different location. The lobby is tiny. It didn't do that. But I really just went to go see. No parachute drop? No. Uh-uh. Oh. I mean, this was Toylanta, not Jolanta. But apparently Jolanta, which is separate now, doesn't oh. have a parachute drop. Um, mm-hmm. but I went, I wanted, I, Sean and Joey said they were going to be there and I'm like, crap, that's, I, you know, I wanted to meet them. Um, and I mean, it, it's kind of funny because like, I, I've known both of them now for so long that I like, I, I, Joey's like, Hey, I can't wait to meet you. And I'm like, I, we've talked for years at this point. Like it's, it's not the same, like everybody, everybody here has met. Yeah. But like, I don't even think about that anymore, especially now that I like work remote. And I work with people that I've never met in person, so I don't even think about it that way. But it's good seeing Rob. I forgot how much I missed Rob. Um, he was telling this joke loudly in the in the hotel uh, restaurant. You know, and like Rob, sound effects and explaining things, and he scared an old man at the, at the, neck, at the table beside Avis, trying to tell <laughs> telling the joke. And it was so great. Hmm. Uh, I really, really, really missed Rob. Eric says he's old now. Yeah, that's pretty old. He's pretty old. Did you see the uh, Myth of uh, Legions table that was there? No, I, no, I don't even know what that is. What is that? The figures I've been collecting. The These guys, they have a whole bunch of, like, four horsemen and... The uh, headless I, horseman. I heard something about four horsemen having either been there or have been there in the past, but not yeah, they were there. there. Yeah, I don't look hey, at that crap. Hey, Diecast was a was was Valiverse there by chance with their with their line of stuff? Uh, not that I know of. Because their um, their large vehicle is about ready to come out. I can't remember the name of it for some reason. Um. It's an a and not an ATV. It's a Humvee of sorts. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it at the last show. I was at. Yeah, what's what is that name? I can't remember the name of it. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't take it. Like, I talked to the guys, and me talking to the guys was, "Hey, is Mark here?" And they're like, "No, he's on vacation." I was like, "Okay." (laughs) Which Mark? Who? What are you talking? Mark Weber. Oh, oh, is he at Four Horsemen now? No, he's at Valverse now. Valvoline, like the motor oil. No, Valverse, the the company that made the Sergeant Slaughter that uh one of them made you buy. Oh, okay. I mean, it, I guess it was a nice figure. I just didn't. Yeah. If I hadn't bought it, the uh, classified toy would have never been. No. Yeah. It yeah. Would not have. Yeah. yeah. No, those Mythic Legions figures are great. I picked up a whole whole bunch more uh, this weekend. There was a there was a show up by me, or up in nor- North Jersey, I should say. Uh, it's the Vanguard, is what it's called. John just spoiled a surprise in the Discord. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, all right, excellent.
So, John, just as a heads up, if you can hear me, it doesn't change. It's, well, it doesn't mean that he has... It's been on before. I gave it okay. to him. Yeah, but if if he has, you know, gone to a different computer, mm -hmm. like, you know... I'll be done. back in just a second. Best voice on RSC, or... Eric. Don. John is a close second. No, John has a much better... John has a voice of, like, liquid velvet. And I'm like... Sandpaper. I know that may be a hot take. Yeah. John John D is the male Torme of the group. Jen also likes Mythic Legion's figures. I mean, for what they cost, they better be good. What did what did what did, what got spoiled? I don't see anything. John's gonna be on. Oh, okay. I thought so. I thought a product got spoiled or something. No. Is he yes, there was. That, that happened like an down. hour ago. What got, okay, I haven't looked at show notes yet. I've it's it's been a sh crap week. So, um Oh, thanks. I I'm y'all sandpaper. It's nice to feel wanted. What do you mean? I don't get it. Uh in the Discord chat. Don's voice gets instant attention anytime I have the podcast playing out loud. I have to say Don, you're the most popular person like in my outside of the podcast friend group. <clears throat> because people I mean, love hearing Don's stories. I mean, I've been I've been told by several people that I should go into radio. I tried in college, but it's not hard to go into radio, Don. I did it. I did it like at eighteen. Yeah, I know. It's you know, it's if if I had my druthers, I would like to have been the next. Um, and now you know the rest of the story. Who was that gentleman's name? I'm blanking on his name. I know who you're talking about, and. I, I'm Googling because I cannot remember. That's going to bug me now. I should know that. Paul Harvey, duh. Paul Harvey, The most yeah, epic, but... the, most, the most iconic radio personality of all time. Yeah, I, voice, I would like... I would, voice, if, maybe if, not personality. If, if I die, like, Stern. you know... Howard Stern, yeah, in, yes. You know, in like two or three positions below Paul Harvey, I'd be like, that's cool. I'm good. I can't see who's here yet. Is John here yet? Well... He's on the call, but to it's, connect. Been, yeah. it's been saying the whole time he's connecting the audio, so I'm not sure what's going on. Now, I was tempted to get the Vanguard diecast, but it's like I'm I'm only, I'm really only using the Valiver stuff to try to like bolster my female troopers and stuff because there's not that many in Joe classified yet. And I got I got the Vamp, and I really don't want. I mean, it looks good. It's got the a Vamp lot of, is good. Yeah, I know. I've, I've got, I haven't opened it, but I've got it, and I've I've seen a few oh. reviews on it. You gotta open it. It's I know. It's... But... Well, I'm still trying to get the downstairs. I'm almost ready to start assembling shelves and putting stuff on shelves. So yeah. I bought a I bought a new stand today at the restore for Unicron. That'll be the centerpiece of that wall. Nice. And when I move Unicron, then I can put TM at where Unicron's at now. The circle of life. So, Don, of course, you came up in conversation this weekend. Apparently, the, huh. a character from Kong, Godzilla Cross Kong, X Kong, or whatever it's called, is named Tiamat. I don't. I was talking about the Dungeons and Dragons character. I know. That's why I said named Tiamat. I didn't say it was Tiamat. Okay. Okay, so. John's not showing his connecting the audio anymore. He's just showing his muted. But it seems like progress. Yeah, I couldn't find my earbuds, but uh, now I'm using wired ones. You sound great. You do sound great. No. You're still hey using guys. your Yeti or did you change? Oh, on well, camera and everything. I'm using the Yeti wired um You're one AirPods. of the five percent who know how to use that thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, in theory, I should be using my my wireless earbuds, no. but I can't find them. Of course, no. So. no. Why would you use those when you have a real microphone? Well, for for speaker. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for speak for audio for incoming. Like for my. Oh, ear. okay. You don't want to talk no, through fine. the views when it happens. No, so you're no. not okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, John, okay. do you want to share the news now, or do you want to share it during show time, which is like right now? 
Oh, uh, just, yeah. Sorry about that. Let's just share it. Let's just share it then. We, uh, like, yeah. So I'm. Um, it's not. We're not. I'm playing to be on uh, regularly. Uh, maybe not. Guarantee. I can't guarantee every week, but I'm back. I want to be back. I nice. Yay. Awesome. Yay. So, so was that was my was my response pretty clear about how I felt about that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, approximately thirty-seven emojis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all positive. I think. I think they were all positive. Thirty-seven so. in a row. <laughs> in a row. Good. In a row. I didn't read them all though, so you might have snuck in something in there. But yeah, yeah so I'm back. So yeah, nice. awesome. God, right. your display looks great. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> the other thing I discovered with Zoom is apparently, um, and it might be an Apple thing is that it lets you use your iPhone as your camera. Like, oh. it just de detects it and says, hey, you, your iPhone's nearby. Do you want to use it as your camera? Yeah, oh, I, bet, wow. I, bet, I yes. bet that's an iOS thing. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, it looks good. I think it looks good. Yeah. So, for I, sure. iPhones have good cameras, I grudgingly admit. Uh, funny <laughs> enough, yeah. It, it, like, 15 years later, or, or more than that, uh, or about that. Yeah, they've had 15 years to make the camera good, and... It's a good one. Oh, I, why did that close the Discord? I don't know. I mean, I need to look at uh, look at the show notes before I do anything else. No, you can just go through it blind. You've done that before. That's true. Always worked out great. All yeah. right. So okay. So since six is the magic number, I guess I need to just go back to TFYLP, Brian. You know, because you got John now, so you don't need me. You were <laughs> Don, don't try and escape the TFYLP. No, yeah, don't leave. Yeah. Didn't they, they say the, you were dead? Didn't they, they say you were dead? Yeah, they don't yeah. want you yeah. back. You're stuck with us. Uh, they just they just show too. We lost you, Don, or I lost That's... you. He I think you let go of his switch. Yeah, That's I think you right. let go of your mechanical switch. <laughs> but it's sorry. so simple. Yeah, we want you, not them. You you, you belong you belong to me now. <laughs> we want to send you gifts. We want to. Have wait, wait, wait. we got to talk about that during the show. Let's start. Let me start. Let me... <laughs> because we are seven. Recording stop. Accurate. Quote are, we, that, but... are we the magnificent seven? We well, we now. sure are seven. Okay. Recording in progress. Three, two, one. This is Radio Free Cybertron, episode 876. I am Brian Kilby. Radio Free Cybertron is the world's first and oldest action figure and toy podcast since 1999. Uh, hey, guess what? Somebody who was here at the very beginning is back. Mr. John Luna. Hey, back <clears> hey guys. Week. Hello. And Welcome back, John. On the regular going forward. Yep, that's right. So, uh, can't guarantee a hundred percent of Wednesdays, but as many as humanly possible. I I we'll, we'll settle, we'll settle for 80%. Yes, that was Chris. John, I don't know if you noticed this. No, oh, okay. But I left you on the podcast. Oh, I noticed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I, had, I was getting to the point. It's like, should I leave? T should I take John off? I hate to, but maybe it's time. And mm. then, like, literally, I got an email this weekend saying, "I'm, I'm back, awesome. baby." That's right, back in the saddle. That's awesome. Awesome. Let's do it. There's Diecast and Matt. We're all happy. Rob. <laughs> yes. Hell. Yeah. And the Donald. Hello. Oh, don't call him that. Oh, yeah, Donald. Don. Yeah. Yeah, don't curse Don with that name. No. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, so I, I, I'll be honest. I've had a crap week, so I haven't looked at show notes or anything, so I'm flying blind. I will say I went to Toylanta this weekend, and it was flipping awesome, except for, like, walking around with my bum knee. Got to hang out with uh, uh, Joey and Sean and Rob Springer. And it was great to meet Joey and Sean in person. I mean, I feel like I've known them for years now, you know, through the podcast, you know, their patrons and on Hot Five and whatever. And I've done things with Sean, like on my last couple of Christmas albums, Sean has shown up as Santa Claus. But uh, like getting to meet him in person was great. Hanging out with Rob was so awesome. Rob told a joke really loudly at the restaurant and scared an older gentleman at the table beside of us. It was it was amazing. I missed. Was it Rob? I think it was it Rob that. No, that was probably Mad Max. I was going to say somebody pulled a gun on Gary Chalk. That wasn't that. That was that, that was that was Max. Max. That was Max. Yeah, Rob's done something crazy though. 
Not like that. Not like that. <laughs> I don't, to my knowledge, Rob Springer has never done anything that would, um, like, plausibly get him arrested. Was that BotCon 01, 02? I forgot when I forgot when Max John were I you don't, at that I, were you at that convention? I was at um, yeah I was at that one. The only one I missed two thousand four OTFCC because I was at BotCon, and I missed two thousand seven in Rochester because I was unemployed. But were you? But were you there when that happened? Is the reason I asked. I heard about it after the okay, fact, yes. so, so I, I don't know. I will say John is an OG member of the show. Chris is an OG member of the show. Mad Max was an OG member of the, the the group as well, so he did mostly stuff like on the site back then. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I miss that guy. When we did the was it the tenth anniversary episode, we had a bunch of the old voices. I don't submit. think he, I, I, I don't think he was on it. I don't. I don't think. Um, he was. no he he sent in a segment for some special that we did. I know because I edited it. Okay. I'm certain. Well, I was going to say Alex. May, that may have been a period when Alex was sort of invisible. We've had so um, many people on. Over yeah. the, there are people that, like, there's so many people that have been on this show over the years. This is the most consistent group of people that we've that we've had. We've been going strong for like most of us for like over ten years. Well, mm -hmm. Brian, you know what they say: consistency is victory, and victory is life, and victory is life. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so uh, let's jump into the news. Enough talking about like the old days. Let's talk about the new days. All um, we know is the old days. We're old. <laughs> well, we're talking about a Target Legacy four pack, and that can't include anything old, can it? That has to be just new stuff. Well, I mean, define what you mean by old in this context, because like it, it may not be like actually old toys, but so, oh gosh, yeah, like I did. What, did we just learn about this this week? We learned this about just, just an hour up. ago. Okay, so I'm like, like I said, I've had a really bad week. I've not had a chance. Thank uh, you, JT. Last... Yeah, yeah. Thank you, JT Prime. So, Cyberverse Tarn, which is a Legacy Tarn repaint. Yeah. Okay. Is there you. such thing as a Cyberverse Tarn? There is. There, there is. Yeah. Um, it. So, Tarn appeared in I think two stories in Cyberverse during the final season, wow. um, and and basically, well, so. I always thought that the Legacy Tarn toy more favored Cyberverse than the comics in terms of like the the body shape, because uh, the toy is you know kind of on the slimmer side, and Tarn in the comics was large, hulking, and monstrous. Um, but otherwise, the only real difference between the Tarns is just that the Cyberverse one had more like uh, you know light up features, I guess, spread over the body. So they're trying to reflect that in the deco, and like. Tarn's an okay toy. It's not one of my favorites. We talked about this to, to some extent last year. Um, boy, time just that sure is a fire in which we burn. Um, <laughs> but no, like I'm, I'm kind of into this in concept, and like in the final episode of Cyberverse, Tarns were basically um, generic troopers. So between this and the reissue of Tarn that's going to come out next year, I think, if somebody wanted to make a small group of Ultimate Decepticon Tarns, like this would actually be a good like command unit for them if you want to uh, kind of go in that direction. I'm kind of into it. Yeah. I will yeah. tell you, too, I hate spiders, but I love this orange tarantulas. Cause like that's a great toy yeah. just to start with, and now it's orange. Yeah, so... my mom never had one of those. So tarantulas, that's that's another toy. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is based on the um the cross cells from the original Beast Wars Deluxe Wave, where tarantulas, an early version of tarantulas, was pictured, and it was clear orange instead of being a purple toy, like it ended up. Yeah. Mm. Prime Cliff Jumper. I didn't. I didn't see Yawn. that coming. I didn't. I did not see that coming. But I, I, I kind of did because of the exhaust pipes all over Chase. <laughs> it like kind of narrowed down your options. I don't have Chase, mm -hmm. so like this, I was blindsided by this. Oh, so okay. that's that's interesting to me. Uh, but uh, G One Squeeze Play from Mind Wipe. Hmm. 
And I like that. That that's the one. That's the winner of the set to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Does anybody need literally everything except for squeeze play out of one of these sets? <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't much care for it. But oh I'm no, glad it's they did it's it. it's terrible. I but like we're that still they did all it. gonna buy the set yes. for squeeze play. <laughs> yes. I love that they <laughs> did it. It's awful, but we're gonna buy it. Yes. Yes. Feature. We talking. don't hate it. It's just no, awful. It's just awful. And, but we're still going to buy it. So, I, yes. I love, so there's your new shirt. I love the tech spec deco detail on the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Um No, I mean okay, so like we, we are we're dragging this thing already from the rip, but like for what they had to work with making this, like yeah. there is some care and some love for what they're trying to do, even if they were a little bit hamstrung by reality. Yeah. I'm. This is what read that. Yeah, like, they they had to turn a bat into like a cobra lobster thing, and which is amazing <laughs> that they got anywhere close to it. Like Hasbro used to do stuff like this without retooling. Yes. So the mm -hmm. fact that there's any of that is impressive. So... And remember, like three years ago, we got Weird Wolf off of the Double Dealer mold, or not Double Dealer, um, Double Cross mold family. Uh, which was equally unsuited to its task and also kind of not good. So at the rate we're going, by 2028, we should finally also have a horrible, probably made from, like, animated Bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm other than Tarn, I, I can't tell if he has the same Decepticon face or if there's a different face. I can't tell from the image. Um, but I want all of them except for Tarn. But the cool thing is, this is scheduled to release on my birthday, six twenty one. <laughs> so uh, that, that's so, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, nice. I I love it. I think I love this. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm trying to look and see. The tarn, honestly, Don's right. The the tarn is the least, the one I'm least excited about in this set. Like I could do without the tarn. I don't need a Cyberverse Tarn. Um, but yeah, this is pretty awesome. This yeah, is yeah. a pretty awesome set. Yeah, he's he's going up for sale as soon as I get the set. I <laughs> think Tarn is just a straight redeco. I, I'm looking at the Tarn I have, and like all the shapes in the face look the same. And like obviously, if you you know enlarge these pictures, you can see that they were taken. They're photos of photos taken off of a screen. So like when this goes up properly for pre-order apparently tomorrow morning we'll be able to see in much better detail but from what i can see on here it doesn't look like this is a remolded toy hmm. and people were having a hard time getting tarns so if if yeah tarn I is mean, one to a case and it only shipped once this could really be their tarn i mean it's you know yeah tarn right um at, like until next year whenever the package refresh of Tarn is due to come out, you know, yeah, with the other toys in this, especially if you miss Tarn and you also want to add Squeeze Play or Cancer, depending to your collection, like, it's a good uh, two-in-one shot. Yeah. And I just like that Tarantulas. So. Yeah, no, that, that, great. that orange Tarantulas is something I've wanted them to do since the the box art black arachnia was made and like my my consciousness expanded to consider things like this also tarantulas has the um the toy accurate head now instead of the animation model head oh nice uh so it is like firmly a you know toy inspired thing this this is something that would pair really well with that box art black arachnia i love that those two things catalog tarantulas and box art black arachnia are distinct things that exist in the toy line. Yeah, it honestly looking at it with this sort of grainy photo, it makes me want a legacy armadillo. Okay, yeah, I know I see where you're coming from there. Yeah. And like the the um the really unsettling thing is they could really just retool tarantulas to make a legacy armadillo. Maybe. Like they're not that far off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh new episode title legacy armadillo not doing that um okay so mark mirror posts uh new photos of ferric and cannonball reinforcing my pre prior thoughts pretty much ferric yes cannonball's okay cannonball yeah. eventually yeah 
it, it's weird. Ferric is in some very kind of muted colors, but with that orange, everything just seems to get pulled together. Red? That's the power. That's the power of, of orange. orange. Don. Yes. Yeah, I know. But I'm I'm just saying it. Just if you look at his body colors, it's all this light cream and gray. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like these professional deco artists understand color theory. Yeah. yeah. But when you add the orange face and the highlights, the whole thing just yeah, pops. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Also, it's more of a red than an orange, but like still, I, I'm going to attribute it to the power of orange. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, like, the other I... interesting thing is if you go toward the, the end of this uh, post, there is actually a, a a batch of like concept art for the retooled face, and it looks like at one stage of this they were actually considering um, basing the new Cyclonus head on the Transformers, the movie DS game, uh, the Cyclonus that appeared in that. So like, it isn't just the uh, Floro Dairy concept art that they were considering for doing this. They were looking at like other iterations of G1 style Cyclonus to make something that is true to the original Ferric uh, convention exclusive, which was just a straight Cyclonus redeco, but still making it have its own identity. Uh, just you know, different uh, expressions of that. The, the screenshot of that character on the wiki is tiny, so I, I can. <laughs> I, I didn't remember the difference in, with that. It doesn't look mm -hmm. bad, but like I, yeah. I'm glad they did what they did. I think. But I'll be honest with with them getting the new weapons that become either the wing mounted or the handheld. I don't mind they're not being a target master. I think he looks better with those smaller like wing blasters and stuff, even though he does have the regular, I guess, the Cyclonus gun. And it, it just gives him a whole a whole different identity. So I don't mind not having the target master. I don't think of I, I don't think of like Cup or even Hot Rod. I don't think of Cyclonus as target master first. Well Ferric only had the target master because of the mold they were using. They couldn't separate the the nightstick off of it. Yeah. Rob? I was just going to say, I feel like uh, Cyclonus is a little bit more cemented as a target master because of the subsequent versions that have, you know, shipped with target masters. Right. Whereas, you know, they, and because the rebirth is awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, rebirth Universe awesome. 2008 really did kind of like bake the idea of target master Cyclonus more into the consciousness of the fandom at that time. Mm hmm. Um, to the extent that when they were doing the select, they were playing the select version for um, Kingdom Cyclonus, like one of the things they wanted to bake into that was including a target master. They wanted to make that uh, reference to the target master toy to still kind of carry that forward. So back to Farrakh and Cannonball, another interesting thing in this post is at one point they were considering using the reactivate Soundwave mold for Cannonball instead of the Skids mold family. Then they realized it would be more expensive to use that mold. So, I mean, <laughs> I suspect there may be something of that to it. What is uh, cited in the Instagram post is that the production timelines for the two toys would have overlapped and it just was not actually possible to make that and still meet their deadlines, uh, which I think is, you know, probably accurate because. I would suspect in that case what they're talking about with this is not the run of the reactivate toys that we have now, but the what uh, Ben McRae was saying on a stream where there would be more of those coming along later on. And what came out uh, at the end of last year was basically a, a preview quantity of them uh, to get the toys into initial circulation. So that could point to more reactivate two packs of the, the same ones we got, but more of them coming out uh, sometime around the summer for the production timeline to fall where it is. Ooh, that's just what we need. <laughs> well, I mean, that will probably drive the price down as the retailers get too many of them and need to clearance them. Uh, they were already starting to drop on price in uh, on Amazon. Yeah, they've, they've been fluctuating a little bit, but uh, not too much, I suspect. If another batch of them drops uh, over the summer, we'll probably see these two packs go down to about forty dollars. Yeah, the the two pack with Optimus Prime I think was about ten dollars off, which was about fifty three. Does that yeah, sound right? Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, 
anyway, that you know, it would have been interesting if that sound wave mold had been put into use as cannonball. I, I assume it would make um some people happy who are tired of seeing the the skids and crankcase, etc. mold family it's recycled again and again and again. No, I probably still wouldn't have cared. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Mark shows off uh, more photos, including the Deluxe Insecticons breakdown and windsweeper. Mm -hmm. I like the Deluxe Insecticons. They look really yeah. good. Yes. I, I hate that they look really good, but they look really they good. Do. Well, I, I think now we've got better photos. I think Barrage doesn't look quite as kind of wonky as some of those initial photos made him look. Uh, but the windsweeper... Seeing the silver target masters as they're posed in the picture, I get what they were trying to do to recreate his his flip out right arm cannons. I'm still going to buy the non F has already said they've got the uh, uh, correct cannons in the yeah works. yeah they're doing an add on kit yeah but seeing them like that I get more of what they were trying to do since it was all gang molded together so right. I, I appreciate them trying to make it with what they had to work with. Yeah, I mean, especially since they could have just as easily, like, said, okay, we're just going to equate trigger cons with target masters now, and, like, we're just going to paint these up as, you know, fully realized characters. I mean, some people probably would prefer that way, just to have more characters in, but, like, for people who don't go in for the add-on kits, at least there's something to kind of get that visual, uh, that visual quality in there. Yeah. Looks nice anyway. Hopefully that set will uh will drop in price a fair bit too and then I'll actually buy it because I have no need for that breakdown. Yeah. yeah. I don't care about breakdown. Yeah. No. Um I'll be honest, I I clicked on this news item and I thought, don't I already have this? In <laughs> in hand MP fifty six plus rigorous. Yeah. Yep, that's definitely a yellow trail breaker. Uh Kind of a mishmash of yellow trail breaker and yellow hoist. There's a, there's a lot of yeah. hoist in there with trail breakers alt mode. Yeah, I have so many unboxed, and that may not be true. I may have opened them and looked at them and just went eh, and threw it back in the box. But I feel like I have so many unopened masterpieces, like even ones that have like the outer sleeve that I don't know what's in them. Like I'm just like so over masterpiece, right? And I'm not I'm not pre ordering. I'll. This. Probably go in for this at some point, like if the price comes down. Cause yeah, because yeah, you get Diaclone the Diaclone color. Ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've got the uh, Mastermind Creations yellow, their yellow version from a couple years ago at TFCon, but I'm hoping they'll do a hoist in Diaclone color. So, because I've heard it's good things about the hoist mold, but I've got hoist through X Transbots. But this is just. Yeah, so that's kind of a question. Like, hoist theoretically was better than Trailbreaker for the mold changes, but is there enough of that in Rigorous to actually overcome the Trailbreaker that's still there? Yeah, that's, it's, he's, he's like a turducken. He's, the, it's, well, we're kind of verging on the masterpiece of Theseus here. <laughs> I know what you did there. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get a show title. Game. I mean, yep. it just, <laughs> it does, I can't tell you why other than it just doesn't look Right. No, I mean, like, I don't think the cartoony hoist legs really go with the Diaclone thing. Are you putting cartoony hoist legs as the episode title? You sure are. <laughs> I like it. See, like, all of you listening to this in the podcast form and not getting the full experience of the video live on Wednesday nights, like... You miss seeing Brian's face light up when I say some, like, odd offhand collection of words. And we just know, oh, that's going up as an episode title. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any problem with the the cartoony hoist legs um, because they were based off the original Diaclone toy. You know, Trailbreaker was the one that was heavily modified for cartoons. So I'm perfectly fine with the, I, I think yeah. it fits in fine with the Diaclone aesthetic. Yeah, I, it does. It does. I'm just not buying to it. Me it just, to me, it just looks kind of weird the way these come together in combination. I don't know. So, speaking of things that I, I didn't order, which is not technically true, I did order it, but I canceled it. 
Uh, we have uh, photos of the Nemesis Bridge set in hand. It actually looks really nice, but I don't it need does. it. It does. Don't need it. That Megatron looks fully painted. I mean, it probably does have a lot of paint on it. It's, it is very silvery. I Which also know. means it's, it's going to chip and scrape all over the damn place. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is a bridge set, but like, God, I wish that Megatron had the Abraham Lincoln chair instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, not even joking. I'm, I'm like 100% serious. If, well, Brian, I, I, I am about willing to bet cash money that someone in the third party has done that chair. Yeah, but you know, I remember, but I remember yeah, seeing it. That's, I, I mean, have one. Would, yeah, that's you nice. Would, you like, would probably be more likely to go on, um, you know, one of those 3D print yeah. uh, websites where someone has designed that and is offering it up but, for people to make themselves. But it would be preposterous for Target, Target, pardon me, Takara Tomy to do it. Well, and Target would, also. Yeah, Target. But that would make me buy it. <laughs> it looks I, nice. Well, it really does. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to, like, do, you know, specific scene sets, like, I could totally see them designing a cardboard inner tray like a 3D version of the Studio Series backdrops where, you know, it's, it's the Lincoln Memorial and the like Megatron is just sat like, in the middle of it. Like the... Uh, uh, Throne of the Primal. Primes. Yeah. 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 Um, so the thing that I'm reassured by looking at these pictures is that, while Shockwave is a brighter, more saturated purple than the Siege one, it is not still the shade of purple that I want, which is the purple that looks like it comes from the cartoon. Uh, which is like a, a, it's more to the red side of purple than uh, blue, like this still is. So, huh. like, I, I noticed I, something. Yes. If you take Shockwave, his spaceship mode, and mm -hmm. turn it upside down. Yeah, it looks like a submarine, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it kind of <laughs> looks like, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. You're not allowed to turn him upside down. No. They would prefer that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, how different is Soundwave from the Netflix version? There's more. Well, uh, the, the paint, thighs paint haven't the thighs have not discolored with age, so that's <laughs> one difference. I want um, to say the Netflix I, version didn't have the uh, missiles and the shoulder cannon painted. Um, you might be right about that. That is a that's a very little detail and something that would easily they, be dropped first. They did not. It looks nice. It I'm, does. I'm maybe regretting my choice of canceling this. It also <laughs> it also looks like the sound wave has the forearms painted silver. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, there's Shockwave actually looks like the least painted thing in this set, and I mean honestly, it doesn't need it really. Yeah. yeah. It's all right, Brian. I'm sure you had two or three other pre-orders that you forgot about and haven't canceled yet. So. Yeah, probably. Probably. Um, God, if I move, too, I'm going to have to update addresses like on anything that I have pre-ordered. Oh, I, man. Yeah. I, my credit card expired. Good. And <laughs> That's what <laughs> his wife Pulse. said, too. I kept updating it on Hasbro Pulse, and they kept sending me emails saying I didn't update my credit card. So... It it turns out that you actually have to go the the spot they have to update for all orders doesn't work. So you actually oh, have awesome. to go into one of the orders that the old credit card would work and then it and then it actually affected everything. So it, I got about a month and a half worth of products uh the other day. Because all of a sudden, like I kept updating my credit card, but it kept it wouldn't take it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I realized that it wasn't <laughs> updating and I called them and they said, oh, you got to go into one of the orders. So I went into one of the orders and then it updated for everything. And then I got like six packages at my house. <laughs> so I got an update on my uh, HasLab Mega Prime. I said last week that it it ordered, but like I didn't have money on the card to cover it on my prepaid card. PayPal let it go through, and then I got like a notification: "Hey, your bank, your bank, uh, didn't have funds to cover this." And like that's never happened before. So my PayPal account went to the negative, which what that tells me is I can't use that card anymore for this purpose. Mm -hmm. 
because right. what will happen is instead of saying no, the or you yeah, can't, no, there, there's no safety net on there's it. There's no safety net overdraft. On it yeah, yeah. So, um, but like I didn't know a PayPal account could go into the negative, so I just paid it. So from, from my other bank pay, account and I yeah. Have so it. more commonly, PayPal accounts go into the negative when you sell things either on eBay or otherwise, and somebody comes after you through one of the seller protection programs and they just compulsorily refund that buyer. If your account doesn't have enough in it to cover it, they just put you in the negative and then they start sending collections after you to uh, get that money back from you. Yeah. So I Omega Prime went through, so I'll get it now. But also, like, yeah, and ETF... immediately have buyer's remorse and sell it. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know. I think I think I won't. I don't think I will. Well, I mean, we'll find out in about a year and a half. Yeah. So in our Discord, <laughs> tfradio.net slash Discord, Anani TF says, Diecast, your credit card has earned its retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Uh, okay, so... Gaming Fix, our friend, our friend Frank says, learning how to get Transformers on credit is scary. Yeah. Diecast can teach master classes on that. Oh yeah. If, if I want to spend more than just a couple hundred dollars, what I'll do is the PayPal paying for. That's like my trick. That way I can not I don't want to say I don't want to say a couple hundred dollars is not exceeding my toy budget because Kim would kill me. But like if I wanted to get something say like I don't know, a mitten box Fort Max. Mm -hmm. I could pay a couple hundred dollars, two or three hundred dollars every two weeks instead of paying thousand dollars up front mm -hmm. so that's how i that's how i sort of justify that sort of thing so uh, don looked, <laughs> yeah don looked at me very disgusted when i cited diecast with the buying on credit thing the thing is don what diecast is doing is just racking up uh consumer debt what yes. you do is you try to make toys pay for themselves as much as possible. You do a completely different field than what Diecast does. Yeah, I feel like we've got like the light side and the dark side of Transformers yes. financing here. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. there's no, there is no light side to Transformers <laughs> financing. <laughs> well, there's the Diecast there's... side. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the more and less self-destructive sides uh, than, let's say. I did. I did have a Don purchase the other day, um, when Target put up the Target Optimus Prime. There was a coupon. If you spent eighty dollars, you got twenty dollars off or ten dollars off, something like that. So I picked up the Stranger Things Transformers van, which was oh, on yeah, sale. Oh, Code for Red. 26 bucks yeah so it ended only up it ended up being like 11 or 12 dollars for that oh, okay so i was proud of myself i was like that was a total don move and i didn't mean to it just worked out so uh john said in our discord dynamic is carbon neutral that's fair <laughs> that's fair it's definitely true hey on that note i uh i saw Origins Wheeljack and um, Studio Blaster. Series Blaster at Target today, nice. and I was excited that hey, I could use this uh, uh, the discount they have this week on it, having no idea that they're street dated, they dated for the thirty yeah. first yeah. Oh, for the, yeah. the day that coupon and expires when they went up of for course. pre order that sale was not going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And pre-orders are sold out on the Target site. So. Yeah, the uh, Hasbro Pulse pre-order I placed, like, immediately as soon as it went up, is not fulfilled. It's fulfilling April 1st. Mm-hmm. Yay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yellow Park, this is for Diecast, the AMK Pro Optimus Prime in hand photos. Are these your photos? They're not. But, man, you can't tell me that that figure doesn't look good. It does. Yeah, Jim, oh, yeah. it does. I mean, I still will tell you that it doesn't just to spite you, <laughs> but I would be lying. Yeah. But I will lie to you to spite you. I, it's worth it to me. I'll Ten years ago, if you told me I'd be excited about a non-transforming figure, I would have told you you're you're wrong. Um, I make fools of us all. 
Yeah. Yes, it does. And and it's really nice. It's even got light uh, lights in the eyes. And the gun has a magnet in it. So you just hold the back of his uh, gun to his head. And you put a gun actually... to his head and his eyes light up. That's an interesting action feature. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think he even has the flip up communicator on his arm. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it's there. Um, but yeah, they're there. And then they got the stand and they got him in the pose, which is so awesome. This, I just can't wait to get this figure. It looks good. I, I got one of the uh, mini kits, uh, I think last week when you weren't here. And that is a particularly nice figure. I, I, I'm probably going to get, uh, get more of those. Where did you get it from? Uh, Amazon has them, but uh, for about $13 each or all six for 50 tfradio.net slash Amazon. I might but, have to go buy that right now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it, the, the listings for those are weird because I had I kind of had to dig uh, for it. Like I had to go to one of the multi packs and then I was able to find the singles. If anybody uh, anybody wants uh, individual kits, the individuals are like, yeah, 13 a piece. And there's also an Optimus Prime and Megatron two pack for 20 in that scale. Oh, by the way, Paladin brought up a very good point uh, as far as the target pre-orders. 31st is Sunday. In the U.S., Sunday is Easter, so they're not going to be open on Sunday. Target will be open on Sunday. Mm-mm, they're not open on Easter. The heck? Yeah. I have, Walmart I have, at least has a good sense to be open on Easter. Yeah, I have forgotten about that. I went to Target on a Sunday, and they were closed. What are they, Hobby Lobby? I mean, they're never open on Sunday. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, good on them, I guess. Blade Raider wants to know if we take a drink when Diecast adds debt to himself. <laughs> we would die of alcohol poisoning, sir. I mean, I, I do want to mean... say to clarify, <laughs> I put everything on credit card. Everything. I don't use it. Really? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, no. Liz, <laughs> let shocked. me finish. I pay I pay the credit card off before any interest accrues. So I don't use my bank account to buy stuff because I just feel like it's safer for my, my I, I've had my accounts hacked so many times. My bank account's never been hacked because well, I yeah, don't I mean, use that to pay for anything. When you're doing all that Taobao stuff, that, there's certainly probably some security concerns with that. Yeah. yeah, so I don't let interest accrue on my credit cards. I pay it off. Well Otherwise, before. though, as long as you have even a half decent bank and you keep an eye on your statements or your online banking, if you can, like generally, if something happens, your bank will have your back if you report it within their time frame. It's um, a pain in the butt. It is. No, I know. <laughs> I've 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 had, um, you know, debit card fraud myself in small quantities over the years. And like, yeah, it sucked. It's really inconvenient. Uh, but like, I've also never been in a position where like, I didn't get my money given back to me almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, uh, to be honest, diecast just with all the stuff you get, it's more impressive that it sounds like you are genuinely not spending beyond your means. Like, Oh I, no, I, <laughs> no. I, I do not. The only thing I do that with is cars and houses. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, I mean, fine, that's fair. <laughs> uh, you know, with, with what with what Blade Raider said, it's like if you want to get drunk like that, just do the GI Joe drinking game and watch the movie. One drink for Yo Jo, two Joe for two drinks for Cobra, <laughs> three drinks for every every parachute. I mean, at least you have more fun killing yourself that way. Okay, uh, let's see here. <laughs> God, Hot Wheels Skate Transformers Bumblebee version, yay! Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same thing we were talking about last week, but, but Bumblebee, but Bumblebee, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yellow. It's yellow. I'm certain somebody this is somebody's jam. Yeah, no, I'm no, I, I'm I've never heard of this product before, but I don't care about skateboarding. Like there's probably dedicated collectors of this line, whatever the hell it is, in whatever uh, you know, <laughs> branding affiliations they've had up to this point. This is probably really cool 
to somebody out there who is outside of our conscious spaces. I mean, you could use these with the skate park Optimus Prime you guys got a couple years ago. That I was all about that th- thing. That was like oh, yeah. 10 years ago. <laughs> that was seven great, years ago. Great toy, though. No, God, that was nine years ago. That was, yeah, that was a Titan's Return toy. So, like, that was 2015. Mm hmm. Because that was, that was, has, has con. And Hascon was, is it 2015 or 2017? I thought the skate park was an SDCC toy. I, yeah, it yeah. was. was it? Yeah, Has, Hascon was like 2017. Then what was it? What did they have at Hascon besides uh, RC? Headmaster RC. Headmaster RC. So, okay, they had they had that, that Prime at the store because that's where I bought it. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, it's seven years old. Okay. 20, okay. It was, no, tw- Get, so God, it, okay, so many, well, it's, so it's, a, it's a Titan's Return toy, which narrows down when it can be from. Combiner Wars went a year and a half. Titan's Return picked up halfway through 2016. That Optimus that they redecorated was a first wave leader toy. So they wouldn't be able to use that for SDCC purposes until the following summer. So that had to be a 2017 exclusive. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just googled primitive skateboarding Optimus Prime, and the first thing is an Amazon listing that says SDCC 2017. Yeah, and that was before Hascon, which was what September, I think, or October. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what I was what was happening? What was happening? I was confusing uh, 2015, which was anybody know what that is? The Shardicon that didn't happen. Oh. Oh um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I I backed their Kickstarter analog for that, and then of course got refunded when they decided that it wasn't going to work out. Tragic. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you, Chris. I'll read it as you wrote it. Oh, New Zealand Mint never change. <laughs> so it is a. This is silver, right? So yeah, it's a five ounce silver poster coin. For five hundred dollars, limited to two hundred units. Uh, then there's a one ounce silver poster coin for one fifty. I don't know what silver spot price is right now. Not that this is it, necessarily it's, tied to the spot price, but yeah, no, it, yeah. this is this is above this is above the silver rate. I mean, spot right, spot price is like twenty five bucks. Last I checked, it is twenty four sixty four right now. Yeah, um, and this pricing is consistent with the coins we've made fun of in the past, where yes. they're about a hundred dollars per ounce of silver in the form that they sell it. Yeah, and I buy silver in in you know with the spot price, so I buy like generic silver or like things like that, and I love it. Great value silver. Great value silver. <laughs> Brian Kilby I hope Bill silver. I hope Bill Sinkevich gets uh, a cut of this. I don't that get being, that joke. That being his cover he's, for Transformers yeah, number one. Oh, that's not a joke that then. No. So what's no. what what is on it? I didn't even look at the picture. Uh the cover to Transformers number one as painted by Bill Sinkevich. Oh, I was looking at the one that was the box art. Uh I didn't even see that one. So uh the box is the box art, I believe, is and the that... and the actual silver is the cover. Is that how you say yeah. his name? Yeah. Yes. I've always said Sankowitz. I I've been saying it wrong. So yeah, he, he he actually uh, made his uh, Twitter handle at one point the proper pronunciation so people would have it. Oh, nice. I've been saying it wrong for 40 years. I was saying it wrong until I saw him on Twitter. Sorry, Bill. Yeah. Although, to my knowledge, I've never tried to say his name out loud. <laughs> I love his art. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. So like my friends and I, like uh, the Meat Space friends, will talk about like his art. And yeah. Uh, Oh, so when we say coin, it's this is actually it's a rectangular thing, a slug. It's a rectangular slug of silver. Yeah, that has been painted on, I guess. Printed yeah, there, on there. There's some technology they do. Oh, wow, actually, that looks pretty slick. It looks like a baseball card. Yeah, roughly. Um, honestly, that's nice looking. Oh. Well, for for five hundred dollars, you can. Oh, and, and this is legal tender. Crap! It is legal tender. Yeah, it's um. So I guess where NIU that is where, he, so that is an island country. Um, and it looks like the New Zealand Mint, 
based on what I'm seeing is New Zealand Mint is minting coins for that country. So like, it is... like how some of the ones you would see on TV in the 90s were making coins for like Liberia or something. Exactly. So it's legal tender there. So dang it, that means I do I need it? God. I think you, you do. need it. Yeah, you need it. <laughs> so like when it's just a med silver medallion or something, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, uh -huh. Like th like this island country, like there's a there's like a, a Coke uh, bottle. There's like a Coke bottle cap coin that is out there for them. I guess New Zealand mended all that stuff. That's interesting. Um, man. I mean, not necessarily. They may, they, may, they might be in an agreement with them for this specific purpose. Uh, well, I mean, certain like it, it takes some infrastructure to do. No, to, I know, yeah, no, I know. Like yeah, to do this stuff, they, they're probably working with someone to mint their currency. It's not necessarily New Zealand for all of their stuff. It yeah, could maybe be. Not. Yeah, don't know. Man, that's pretty nice looking. I'm I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty nice looking. Not five hundred dollars nice looking, but. Well, they have a one ounce uh silver poster coin for a hundred and fifteen. So, uh. Oh, it's temporarily out of stock. Never mind. I. I'm sure there's a cheaper reproduction of that cover if you if you really wanted one. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the cover one is the one that's hundred bucks. Unless you get it from Canadian coin and currency, and it's 190, well, 190 in American dollars. I don't know. Okay, well, I, let's just move on. It's not important. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Do I need this? Oh gosh. Um, my invest, like it's the it's the 27th. My investor create bills on the first. Now I better not. But if anybody wants to buy silver, briankilby.com slash silver. Uh, imbibe on IP infringement. What is this? Uh, so some brewery what? is making a, I think, a fruity beer with um, really, huh. really closely similar uh, Transformers character designs. And even the faction symbol uh, printed on there somewhere that I think is probably close enough to get someone to look at them funny. Yeah, they're, they're probably going to get a cease and desist, if nothing else. <laughs> He's got a lime on his head. That's that's you know. Oh, I thought that was a hat. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a lime hat. As you do. Yeah. Yes. As was the style of the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if anyone's in Arizona and wants to send me a beer, I will definitely drink it on the show for you. No, but I mean, if you look <laughs> at if you look at the the back of the can that's in the right side of the frame, like they, they literally they just took the Autobot symbol and cut the top off of it and put. A, lemon, a lime on or a it. lime, yeah. Um, yeah that that's the one. I I think the drawing they could get away with the drawing. So um, I'm not even so sure about that because that's very distinctly Optimus Prime, and they are using that to sell a product and make money unlicensed, as far as we know. Um, no, you that's know, Optimus Lime. That's not Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is red. Okay, so when when um, I guess Arizona Craft Brewers or whoever makes this gets sued over this, you can volunteer to be their legal representation and make that argument in front of the judge. I I I, I could do that. <laughs> like seriously, I do not represent myself as an expert or anything approaching that on IP law, but like everything that I'm seeing here about this and everything that I have learned over the years is like these people are just asking for lawyers to come to their houses uh, <laughs> and not to drink beer. You know, a lot of these local breweries that do this stuff. Um, I've seen Voltron ones. I've seen star Wars ones. I, I, I don't know that it's a big enough fish to fry um, that, that Hasbro would even look at the, it's not being widely distributed. It's, it's very, uh, okay. very local. Don, you're not holding your switch. Oh, sorry. Actually, I forgot to change the button over. Um, they sent Pinkertons to somebody's house for magic cards that he paid for and was sent the wrong thing. Yeah, sent them like that, two weeks early. <laughs> yeah. And do you think if they did that, they would not hesitate to go after someone 
infringing on a character like Optimus Prime. I know somebody that Hasbro sued once, and they are very, very determined to to do whatever they especially need to do. If yeah, you're, and, especially if you're putting their IP on alcohol. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, I wasn't a, doing... Th- I mean, he wasn't doing that. <laughs> no, no, like, that's exactly the problem here. This is very much like the problem with Masterpiece Exhaust, which was an international incident, basically. But, like, you know, that was cigarette branding on a toy. Putting toy iconography on alcohol is, like, a special kind of trouble to get in with various authorities. Yes. And Hasbro, should they become aware of this, and they probably have since it's on TFW now, and we know that they read the message boards and everything, like... When this gets to the right departments in Hasbro and somebody hears about what's going on, like they are going they're gonna be legally obligated to take action against this for their own protection. Yeah. Not even to protect their IP necessarily, but just like for their legal protection against uh like laws of marketing to minors. Yeah, the big I mean, yeah, and beyond that, the other uh you know, legal issue is that with <sighs> This is close enough that someone could reasonably mistake it for being a Hasbro approved product. And, Absolutely. And yeah. that's the problem with that's the yeah. problem with the appearance of marketing to kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. OK, uh, let's jump to what we got this week. John, since you're new to the show, this is a segment where we talk about the things that we got in the prior week. <laughs> that are Interesting. And mm. for patrons at patreon.com slash TF radio, uh, there's a segment okay. that we call ham sandwiches, where if there's something non transformers that you got that you want to talk about, we do that after. <laughs> um, all right. So <clears throat> then um, good news. I'll focus on uh, my on topic acquisition. Uh, so apparently this has been going on for a year. This is the completion of a year long project. Oh, and it's a uh, masterpiece. Raiden. Is it Raiden or Raiden? I, Raiden, been, technically, Raiden. yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I've been infected you by bought Mortal a, Kombat. You bought, you, bought six <laughs> masterpiece, you bought six masterpieces? You? <laughs> you hate yes. masterpiece. You're the, like, Fair the, enough. You're Fair not, enough. You're, I'll bet he hates that even more now. Yeah. Uh, possibly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I might have confirmed like why why I had my original position in the first place. But um, so, yeah, so it's been about right at a year. Uh, since uh, the first train bot came out, and uh, now I've received the final train bot. And uh, so here's the deal um, I actually like them uh, as individual transformers, uh, relative what? to relative to like on the masterpiece scale, which is really important because masterpiece. Uh, transformers, they forgo any kind of attempt at being a toy. Um, and they're just brittle pieces of engineering experimentation. I don't know. So um, the good ones are mostly toy-ish. So I would say like, you know, good old trusty Sideswipe, Masterpiece Sideswipe, it still feels like a toy, but um, basically every Masterpiece Beast Wars toy feels like peanut butter brittle uh, in your hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're terrifying to like hold uh train bots are somewhere in the middle uh of that and yet i really like the train mode it's great perfect model trains i dig it like effectively no robot kittle uh kibble on any of them great fine uh the robot modes are pretty good um could be a lot worse they have great head sculpts they're not too panel heavy uh they're okay they're fine but the combiner robot is a disaster i cannot he he's he's in the unicron scale of just brutal 90 plus minutes of transforming and the result is just unpleasant the experience is unpleasant and particularly so I, I would describe it as this. I described it as this earlier. He's base. He's basically exactly what you would think a com- masterpiece combiner Beast Wars toy would be, which is just 
tiny panels, tabs and slots everywhere with like no regard for how much weight the tabs and slots are expected to support. Um, his, his shoulder assembly is just baffling. Like, like I'm not, cause effectively his arms are voyagers. So, you know, your, your shoulder assembly has to support the weight of a voyager on each side of his uh, torso. It's just a collection of like very small, like tabs and slots and panels that all just kind of fold in on themselves and attempt to support like this, like entire arm. And uh, guess what? They don't, it doesn't. It doesn't really, um, his shoulder articulation doesn't really exist. There's, uh, you know, there's not too much there. Um, he's just not good. He's not good. Uh, everything about the train bot set is good, except the payoff, like the year long payoff of, um, well, it's been more this combiner year. robot. As it's, uh, it's disappointing. I actually, I think I'm going to disassemble him uh, and put him back into like individual train bots. Cause that's definitely like the most satisfying thing for me, at least. Well, if um, you buy a seventh one, you get a waste extender, John. Yeah. Luck lucky for us, they're releasing two more. That's awesome. <laughs> the, the doctors can't wait. Um, so anyway, yeah, no, um, I don't know. He's like, he's kind of like Unicron in that like Unicron was an interesting experiment. And then you see why transformers are ne never supposed to be that big. And, um, and, uh, Raiden is an interesting experiment and he's like, he's like a lesson in like, no, this is a bad idea. Like, like we should not like the way, the way they design, uh, masterpiece toys and the materials they select for masterpiece toys is not like suited for like combiners, uh, and like just the weight and the, just the complications of combiners and like having like effectively like, um, triple changer. Uh, for every every masterpiece toy in the, in this line, um, it's not great. So I mean, he's disappointing. I, again, like I would say, like if you want like six really kind of interesting and good train bots, that's great. If you're expecting something from from Raiden, like this is not this is not it, and it's a bummer because it took like a year to like get here. But I don't know, guys. He's not. He's just not great. So hey, John. Boo. Yes. Uh, did you look at the Moon Studios version? And if you did, why did you choose Raiden over the Moon Studios? So I'm not like I'm not really a third party guy anymore. Yeah, I know. But but I I have been very heavily exposed to that version through like YouTube videos and um, comparison videos because um, I do not transform a masterpiece anymore without looking at at least like three bare minimum YouTube videos because I do not want to break something. Uh and they're 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 not super intuitive. Some of the some of the train bots are intuitive, but but there's some like nuances in there where you're just not going to get it without some help. So um I I do think Moon Studio ultimately looks better, I would say, as especially for the combiner um robot, but it's all they're also just trying to do something different, right? So um at the end of the day, it's very clear like like this set is really successful at being a, an officially an official scaled set of trains, set of cars. And, and everything after that is kind of secondary, but it is it is impressive what they did with that like that mission. Like starting with that mission of like, okay, we have to have like an official scale, the train modes have to be perfect and that's all true and but from there every step it gets a little bit worse so transformers are okay um the combiner mode is bad but uh like the the trains are great and moon studios is not trying to do that obviously so they're, it's just trying to do something different i i think if you want like a gigantic good looking riding that's probably the better choice um, if you want some weird like footnote in Transformers history that's super expensive and just kind of weird and not good, um, this is fine. This is what that is. This is like Unicron. It's like this weird milestone in Transformers history. Um, and that that's the value in it. It's not necessarily like a good toy, but it, it's it's interesting from a historical standpoint. What I appreciate is the fact that you make me feel much better about canceling the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I got too far into it to bail out. And like I said, I like the individual robots. I don't. But, well, 
then like there's nothing here for you, Brian. My Yuki Kaze fell apart taking it out of the packaging. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I I spent two between two and three hours like transforming oh god these six robots into into riding coming back to it like over the course of the weekend which is insane that's more than i like, spent like, transforming unicron insane. uh yeah i i for sure probably spent more time in segments of my free time transforming this guy and uh than unicron which is crazy for sure yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I misspoke no. it was gets away that fell apart when i took him out of the packaging the uh the wheels mm. fell off the front you know the the one that forms the heel spur of the yep. combined form yeah that was when i knew i was done <laughs> yeah, yeah i wish i had had like a moment like that but like it was always like eh, okay like here comes another one like every month and a half or two months and it was it was just enough to keep it's me like on the, the worst train. subscription so, plan yeah it, it is a, it is a terrible subscription so plan. okay so i want to know so the other day when i saw john making vague comments about his dissatisfaction with raiden in our discord i immediately went to him and said please come on rfc this week i want you to talk about this on the show so john at that point when i approached you for that had you already decided to try to come back to the show on an ongoing basis I did. Yeah, I had already sent Brian that note. So, yeah. and damn I kept you, secret. sir. I, I, did, I did not care. <laughs> I wanted to be a surprise. Yes. Uh, yeah. Final note on uh, on Ryden. It's uh, what is he like? Uh, six times one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty dollars on average. I do not want to do that math. So say uh, he's many hundreds of dollars. He's seven hundred fifty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, he's a statue. Like you, you really, you really need to put him on his stand and walk away. And, uh, you know, is that worth many hundreds of dollars to just have like a statue? I don't know. That's, oh, that's, certain, that's why I didn't back Unicron. Yeah. And, and, and size wise, he's, uh, he's about as bit, he's definitely like thicker, right? Cause he's just, he's a, he's just panels on panels. So he's definitely like thicker and has like uh weight to him that a combiner wars combiner doesn't have, but he's about that big. You know so what doesn't he's have about the big yeah, he's about as big as Computron or your average yeah. combiner wars um super robot, combiner robot. So that gives you like a sense of just size. So, you know, he's not even like especially big. He's just really dense. Um, so yeah, I'm I hate to say it, but I think I'm a thumbs down. What on on Raiden? What Raiden. does what doesn't have all those problems? It costs about the same. Is a loose vintage Raiden. Isn't that crazy? That's true. Yeah. 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 I mean, I paid less than that for mine. I got a really good deal on mine. Um, but yeah, I would I I much prefer it to this one. You know, as a fan of Headmasters the series. When we first started hearing rumblings about a masterpiece riding, and we were all like on the speculation train that, like, yeah, maybe they will make that like Combiner Wars Devastator, where the Takara Tomi engineer on that called that his masterpiece Devastator. And like, still to this day, it's as fresh as when, you know, it first happened that we learned that it isn't true. Like, I am just heartbroken and devastated that we don't have that toy and probably never will have that toy which would give me the train bot experience that i want hmm. i'm wondering if the 86 devastator is going to be more masterpiece than the combiner wars that we got in one sense probably in that i assume toy designs moved along by about a decade since then. all six of them will be individually fully functional robots rather than any of them being mostly sacrificed to the purpose of making the combiner um but i mean other than that i don't think they're going to be any more masterpiece than any average generation style toy especially like bone crusher and scavenger who we know are deluxes yeah okay hmm John, do you get anything else? It's been it's been months since you. That's here. it, any, man. Any anything else cool that you got? Any other? Have you picked up any like Toy Fair catalogs or anything that you haven't told oh. us about? <laughs> uh, I think so, but I can't recall which one I picked up. I did pick up some random 
uh, catalog since I was last on the show. I'll keep better track. I promise, Brian. How, so how are your so eBay sorry. sales going? Uh, they're good. They're uh, well, I mean, they're steady. I, I, uh, they're steady. They're fine. Like I, like I, I actually, I think I'm going to start selling <clears throat> some of my more contemporary stuff too, just because, um, I don't know, man. Like, like <clears throat> I'm kind of, I'm kind of in that, in that, um, uh, phase where I want to really like, uh, cull everything down regardless nice. of like the vintage. So <clears throat> even stuff from like, I don't know, 2017 to now, I'll probably start like listing some stuff. I, I mean, surprisingly, <clears throat> often that stuff is more valuable than like super vintage stuff. It's like weird, random stuff from the last five years mm -hmm. can have a lot more value than 40, 35 year old stuff because people have kind of stopped caring about that stuff. It's interesting. Yeah, I see. Well, as, like most of the people who have or who, who would want the 35 plus year old stuff have gotten it by now anyway. So the market has completely yeah, shriveled. For sure. It's like uh, 12 inch Joe's. Yeah. Uh, which, which is like, I mean, uh, you know, uh, father time is undefeated there. So yeah, like, yeah. You, like, either, you either have everything you look, you're looking for, or you have died before reaching that point, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is like <laughs> about 10, 15 years. Uh, and it'll be, it's going to be our generation. I don't want to think about that, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a similar thing. Yeah. I mean, there are many reasons that demand's going away, but, um, but yeah, stuff stuff from the last 10 years is often just like that's the stuff people are nostalgic for and that they'll pay big money for some weird like end of the line power of the primes piece or just something that you don't even apply like value to in your head. Like that's the stuff now. Yeah. I just put a couple bids in. It's just so <laughs> as, as a heads up. I see you're selling your GDO Megatron. Or your oh. uh, or GDO. Yeah, Bond, yeah, Bond I just Dytron. don't. Yeah. What is it? Bondatron? Is that what it is? Yeah, uh, no, it, the, uh, the GDO upgrade. would be a Megatron, but it's made from that Bludgeon Bonsaitron mold. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's so... made from Bludgeon, and his treads haven't like rotted away. I assume that affects that one too. Uh, every version of that mold, probably. probably so, but yeah. like, so like, I'm going through the stuff I'm gonna get getting rid of. I think I'm gonna get rid of my GDO wheel wheelie. Oh, it's cloud burst on. Okay, thank John, you, John. Did I did I just share something I shouldn't have? Well, nobody oh, knows. No. Nobody yeah, no, knows no, no, for no. sure the context handle. of that. His but... eBay yeah, handle no, my... is Cloudburst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eBay handle is Cloudburst. It's fine. Yeah. For sure. So, okay, cool. Okay, Any, anything else? Nothing else? Nope, I'm okay. good. Um, I'll go next. Okay. Uh, so I have Legacy United Gears and Cybertron Starscream. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. Ooh, is Gears as good as he looks? Actually, yes. So between yes. the two, right. I like Jealous. Gears more. Hmm. Even as though... it should be. Even though Cybertron Starscream is a design that I've always liked, so naturally I will talk about Starscream first. <laughs> um, no, okay, so like Starscream, Starscream really is like it knows that it's supposed to look like Cybertron Starscream, but it doesn't know why it's supposed to look like Cybertron Starscream. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, it's going through all the motions, but there's not, like, a clear understanding of why it's having to do what it's doing, because nothing really works the same as on the original toy, and the original toy worked because it was this chunky, almost bricky thing in the alt mode, and, like, the robot mode really did sacrifice, I'm talking about the Voyager one for reference here, the, vo the robot mode really did sacrifice to make that vehicle mode work, and the Supreme probably even more so than that. Um, so, like, there was a great measure of stability in both modes because it had to be the way it was. It was a very 2005 toy. Um, Why 2005? This is, yeah, exactly. That was a joke for the three people yeah. get. Yeah, <laughs> including me. Um, so uh, Legacy Cybertron Starscream does not have that, like, sturdy, rigid structural integrity to it. Now, the robot mode on it is basically fine. Um, it has a wider range of posability than the original toy, which is not difficult at all, um, especially in the arms. So there's even, um, the way the shoulders are set up, 
you know, it's the like main engines for the alt mode sticking up from the shoulders, and then you got the whole shoulder block underneath them. On the original toy, you had either just a tiny bit of outward movement at the shoulders or none at all. I can't remember for sure. This actually has special joints that are almost entirely to move those armor pieces out of the way so the arms can raise out to the side farther. Um, Rob, you will be familiar with this especially because it's something they do on a lot of uh, Gundam figures and model kits to have that posable shoulder armor. Um, there is utility in it for the transformation to reverse the arms for the alt mode, but like... I think they could have achieved that same effect without having those movable parts. They did that solely, I think, for the sake of robot posability, and I really appreciate that. Hmm. Um, the robot mode is very much influenced by the media uh, interpretation of Cybertron Starscream, which Transformers Cybertron was a super toy-accurate cartoon, but they still tweaked like body proportions and stuff uh, to make the things look as good as possible. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, taller and slimmer looking than the original toy, which was, you know, it was built thick and bricky, which I like that aesthetic in it. And this is very like, this is almost more like, you know, anime looking the way they've got the proportions laid out. It's not bad. It's fine, especially being a more poseable take on it. I don't have a problem with that. Um, it really is, though, just the transformation is not like comfortable or fun to do. And then the alt mode, once you get there, it doesn't really work well with itself. Um, so, like, one significant problem is that, like, the nose of the jet or spaceship mode, whatever you want to call it, I can't find a way around this. It points up a little bit. It doesn't point, like, level and flush with the rest of the body. Um, so, like, it always looks like it's a little bit off kilter. I was looking around at some uh, pictures other people had posted. I hadn't seen any, like, outright references to the fact that the toy kind of curves up in front a little bit. But the pictures I was seeing seemed to depict the same thing happening. So it doesn't feel like that's a defect or a mistransformation on my part leading to that. That just seems to be the way the toy is designed. Um, the Do other... You... Oh, go ahead. Do you think that's a... Uh, motor master hip ratchet situation where like the ratchets will just not land in the right place for the nose to be in the position you want it to be or is it something more think sculptural there even is, I don't think there even is ratchets okay hmm. I mean good thought but that doesn't seem to be the problem um, okay. no no it just seems like where the parts lock in where they lock in forces it to be pointed that way for reasons beyond my comprehension hmm the other problem I have with this is, well, it's it's kind of a compound problem. So, um, you know, the the arm cannon pieces are uh, removable. They're separate in the package and you put them on. So they just uh, peg in with five millimeter posts. So one problem with that is they will tend to deflect along their axis of rotation on that peg. So if you want to keep everything like straight and lined up, that's a challenge. Um, but also like you can knock them out pretty easily. They, they peg in snug, but the, uh, the ports that they peg into are kind of on the shallow side. So it doesn't take much to overcome that grip. And then the shoulder armor thing that I was praising for the robots purpose is a little bit of a detriment here because it also won't quite line up square, certainly not on my copy. Uh, mm -hmm. so like, you know, everything in the alt mode is just a little bit off and, I love on the original toys the way this alt mode looked. It's one of my favorite like original takes on a classic character design. Um, and this, you know, its uh, inspiration goes back to uh, Don Figueroa and his uh, The War Within comic designs just put through like a more like uh, greebly mechanical filter even for the original toy. And like being that it's like my favorite part of Cybertron Starscream, I'm just kind of disappointed that it's not represented here nearly as well as I think it could have been. Um, like, I don't hate this toy for something that represents a good posable action figure version of Cybertron Starscream as a robot. It succeeds pretty well. Um, it's just, it's not as complete a package as I would have liked it to be. Also, we were talking when the uh, first pictures of this came out, we found out it came with a little cyber key accessory. 
the cyber key is indeed teeny tiny. Um, it is actually smaller than my thumbnail, my literal thumbnail on my finger. Um, but on the plus side, for such a uh, tiny losable piece, it does tab in very snugly to the cyber key port on the the uh, back of the engine cowling. Uh, so you can probably tab it in there and you are not likely to have it just like walk off on its own and disappear into the depths of the carpet or what have you. The other thing is the rifle that it comes with. I have not quite been able to figure out where they pulled its design from. Um, because, like, the missile launching gun that the Voyager mold came with was a very plain, just like a box with a cylinder at the end kind of affair. There wasn't, like, uh, embellishments. Like, this has, you know, little winglets and stuff on it, little uh, fins and other projections. It's a very visually interesting looking gun, but just off the top of my head, I can't think where they uh, got this design from to then apply to this. If it's an original creation from somebody on the Hasbro team or one of the Takara designers that worked on this, it's a really cool looking piece. And um, it stores actually really cleverly in vehicle mode by tabbing up into the triangular stabilizer piece at the back. Uh, so it basically rests just above the cockpit and, you know, aims out forward over the uh, the spaceship mode. Uh, it's a really good solution. The original, uh, you had to have its missile launcher underslung under the nose, uh, which, I mean, wasn't like a big problem doing that, but it didn't look quite as elegant. This like just slots in and looks very, um, you know, well-fitting linear with the design. I actually like that element of it quite a bit, but yeah, it's, sadly more imperfect than i had hoped it would be and it's just kind of okay i i probably will not buy recolors of this when they inevitably do something else with it um but like i at least appreciate that they put in a good effort on something that is one of my favorite like toy and like character design interpretations now gears on the other hand is actually really really nice um, it doesn't really hurt that it's like, you know, as official toys go, our first really good Gears toy probably ever. Um, the previous generation's Gears, unless I'm forgetting one, was just the retool of, actually not even a, well, yeah, it's like retool of um, the Legends class Swerve from 2013. You mm -hmm. are correct. Yeah, um, and like, while that certainly was colored like gears and had sort of a gears head design like i don't think anybody thought it was a good take on the character uh and then you know before that we had the g1 toy which that's that's certainly a love it or hate it proposition there so this is just like a really really nicely done take on the cartoon design of gears um the head Okay, so the head is, like, imagine you put half of a cheese wheel on a ball joint. <laughs> That's basically what's going on here. He's got, like, the full half moon that just, the whole thing rotates around. Um, if you leave the backpack tabbed in where it's supposed to go, you get about 15 degrees of movement to either side at the next joint. If you let that push the backpack out, it can rotate around the whole way, and the backpack doesn't look, like, particularly distended or anything. Uh, so, like, it's also got, like, up and down movement available. So, for being half of a cheese wheel, it's actually got quite a good range of motion on it. Um, the face looks a little bit big in there, but, like, with gears, you're either going to have, like, a really big-looking face that looks a little weird, or you're going to have a tiny face in that big structure that's going to look weird in a different way. I don't think there's, like, a happy middle ground with this. Um, so, what they ended up with was... Something that's not entirely accurate to what Gears looked like in the cartoon, but is certainly like in the spirit of that. He's got like the the disinterested scowl, so he's not exactly crabby, but he is certainly sick and tired of listening to you. Um, so one thing though that is really cool about Gears is that they have placed the transformation joints in this toy in such a way that they absolutely are usable to boost the posability of the robot. So like a great example of that is in the shoulders where you have the standard universal joint shoulder, but 
that is attached to a uh, swiveling cylinder. That's how the arms flip into the body for transformation. But there is enough range of movement that you have a functional like butterfly joint at the shoulder to get more expressiveness in the arms. Uh, and it feels really natural to move that. It doesn't feel like that's an accidental use of a transformation joint for posing. It feels like, okay, can we get this transformation joint somewhere where it gets the arms where you need to go in the vehicle, but also, like, you can kind of point his gun forward more naturally than just having it, you know, the shoulder sticking straight out to the side and the arm forward. It makes it look just that much more, like, organic, basically, for want of a better word. Um, another place where you have this is in the elbows and the knees, which are both double jointed because they need to fold over themselves for transformation, but they are perfectly usable in that capacity for posability too. Like they put a lot of care and attention into how even just the robot is engineered in relation to what the toy needs to do for both modes. And like, it really shows someone was into making the best gear as possible for probably the only generations redo it's going to get for the next decade or so. Um, and the transformation is actually like quite intuitive and like, it's not complicated, but it doesn't feel like overly simple. Um, there is just enough where you have to think about what you're doing, but it makes perfect sense what needs to go where and why you're doing what you're doing. Even the part where the, um, the hinge up chest piece on it, which by the way, is not attached in package. So make sure to dig through that bundle of tissue paper on the back to get the chest and the gun out. Don't, you know, accidentally throw that away. Otherwise your gears will be topless. Um, but you know, even getting that chest piece up onto the back of the truck, like, you don't even really have to like go out of your way to remember to do that. It just naturally kind of transpires that you get that there as you're finishing up that part of the transformation. And what's really cool about this is that you basically flip the whole toy upside down and then just like unfold it almost accordion unfold it to make the truck out of the robot. Um, I'm probably not describing it super well, but it's a really cool feeling process. And when you realize what you've done to turn the robot into the truck, like it's actually really interesting and something that like, I feel like it's not unique, unique, but it's certainly not a common way of transforming a robot into a car. Uh, so like there's, there is definitely some, some novel thinking here. And I really appreciate that. Um, as for size gears is, a tiny bit shorter than Beachcomber, for example, uh, which I think is as it should be. Uh, you know, Gears should be a little angry man. Uh, and the toy conveys that energy. So, like, basically on all points, I think it succeeds at what it's doing. The truck mode could maybe be a little bit more, like, tidy and together. But at the same time, Gears has never been a good truck, even in the G1 toy. So I think this is also true to the character. So in that, they also succeeded. But yeah, I, I really yeah. like Gears. I'm glad I got it. I'm glad you got it too. I want it. Um, So I got these from Big Bad. I don't know if they still have any of Gears in stock right now, but you can check and perhaps we can take a drink. But that's all I got on topic. Yeah, I'm working on that right now. I don't see it. Uh, it's listed for pre-order. Okay. Okay. Uh, Matt, how about you? Uh, no, I don't have anything this week. Uh, I was supposed to have animated Optimus, but uh, he is dragging his heel somewhere in the Postal Service. Oh. Uh, well, at least I remembered you existed. Diecast? Yes. I got <laughs> the same thing John got. The last train bot. Uh, I got the one. I don't know about you, John. I got the one in the the big huge box that holds oh, yeah. all the train box mm -hmm. um so that's on the list of things to do is just just find them all i don't think i've opened any of them so i'm gonna find oh, them all God. and throw them in the box yeah. and put the box somewhere oh you're not yeah, so you're, the, yeah you're that's the way to go open them. yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm still not gonna open them i bought it for the box set and uh i don't know I I know it's weird, but yeah, they're 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 staying in the box for now, at least till I uh, straighten up and organize and do all that stuff. So forever, <laughs> probably. 
Yeah, why don't you mail them off to be graded? Keep them sealed. Be that guy. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the one your... AFA graded masterpiece uh, ride in. Hey, man. And then you'll show up on some YouTube video 10 years from now trying to sell it at like yeah. a retro shop. You'll be that guy. That's how the story ends. Oh. For 10 grand. Yeah. Does I, so like with like a PSA or Beckett grading for cards, I'm, 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 assuming, I'm assuming comics grades are the same thing. There's a, a pop report, population report, where you can see like what's been graded, what grades are out there. I wonder if AFA does that. That would be fascinating. I, I need to I need to find out and do some mm, on Good it. question. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. A anything else, Diecast? Uh, don't think Transformers related. Related. I think that's it. Hey, right, Rob. Nothing on topic. Don. Yes, I have one thing on topic because I'm making it on topic because it is brave, which I believe is on topic. That's close enough. Close enough. You got something something else too after you're done with brave. Oh yeah, I do. Oh uh, I, yeah, that, I got I got that's off topic though. I got Metamorph Force, which is a Solo Shigoku equivalent. Fire Dagoon. Oh, neat. From, so, like, from, yeah, oh, it, nice. anybody who was around Big Lots in, like, 2003 and saw those bootlegs yep. all over the place, like, yeah. that, that'll have a special place in their hearts. Yep. Yep. I recognize it. <laughs> yeah. yeah this I is, had one of those. Yeah, this is the real deal from Brave Command Dagwon, which was the series that came out before Gal Gygar. Uh, a lot of inspiration was supposedly taken from Gundam Wing, uh, as far as the protagonist, the settings, and some of that stuff. But... This is my favorite non-Transformer branded Transformer. Dag One is my favorite Brave series. I love all the Mecha. Uh, Power Dag One is due later out in this year, so we'll be able to form Super Fire Dag One, which is his final form. Uh, it breaks down into uh, the jump uh, uh, jet, uh, jumbo jet, uh, the ambulance, and the fire truck. Uh, that's the hands, and I want to show you uh, Dagfire, which is the basic robot mode for the hero. This is the transformable toy that it comes with. So, for our podcast listeners, I'm, Don's holding up something that's about the size of the brain of courage from Star Saber, or right? About, yeah, about like three quarters of a Titan Master. If you need something a little bit more, exactly. That's what I was gonna say, and I was gonna, I'm gonna borrow from uh, the review that I watched. Well, Taffa on YouTube, it's smaller than a Diaclone pilot. For those of you that are familiar with Diaclone, it's it's a, basically the size of a nickel, maybe a, maybe a hair bit bigger than a nickel. It's but, a little bit bigger than uh, Legacy Cybertron Starscream Cyber Key. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I was thinking about uh, how to compare it to it. But uh, it is transformable into the car mode, and you can put this. That toy... transforms. Yeah. Hang on. Wow. That's scary. That's scary and hilarious. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, he does it's transform. It's scariest. Yes, yeah. thank you. you yeah, got this is right good. Yeah, that that's the car mode and but you do get a non-transforming version that you can put into which you probably may not be able to see, but that little white slot behind the neck Oh, jeez. Oh, see, I was, wow. see, I was yeah, looking at the, the I was looking at the big black slot on the backpack, but no, no that the, wouldn't make a lot of sense, would it? Yeah, that little white dot in the middle of the black behind the head is the non-transforming car oh, geez. that goes that's the basically it's sort of like he transforms into his armor, the armor merges with the car, the car merges with the jet. And then the jet merges with the power shovel to form a fire dag one. So, so on the bootleg of the original toy, I remember the police car robot being a lot bigger in proportion to the jet. Yeah, uh, the original DX one is, of course, much larger than this. It's that good '90s chunky brave, uh, right? That you would you would the closest thing I can give you to a more current, a more recent comparison would be your Galaxy Four Cybertron toys that big plastic yeah. or chunk kind of feel. Uh, but again, this is my favorite Brave series, my favorite Brave robot. 
I am ecstatic to get him, uh, and I look forward to the rest of them. So I'm very happy to find that my favorite series is finally getting some. They had some mini plot last year, but I'm just not comfortable doing model kits. I got and a feeling. So, I, so when they announced this, not long after the model kits came out, I was willing to wait for this. So, super happy to get this. Can't wait for the red, for the other figure. Cool. So, Don, Amazon wish list is on topic. So, what did you get? Well, I, I got two things. Uh, they're they're sort of off topic, but uh, someone sent Hank a ba- box of Temptations, which he loves. So whoever that was, the, there's a note. Tell us what the note said. I don't remember a note. It I, said it, from it, it, one boss kitty to another, and it was signed Core Class Supreme Cheetor. <laughs> okay, yeah, I wonder, I'll, I'll I take wonder it. who would have done that. Yeah, I wonder who would have done that. Um. At any rate, I do, I do. I, Hank told me to thank y'all for the temptations. Also, I got a piece of furniture from my wish list. Uh, the uh, Furino uh, is the kind you twist together. It's a very basic bookcase, but it's going to look good with the mother. With your oh. Supreme Cheetors. Oh, the core class Supreme Cheetors. That's why I sent it. So you can put <laughs> oh, okay. your Cheetors on it. Oh, okay. All right. I, okay. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Um, but that's all I've got on topic. That was Don. I cannot wait for all of your core class cheetors. That will they'll look great on that. You yes, need they... to put that back on your wish list. No, no. I'm I'm creating a new wish list that's nothing but that. And I'm gonna I need to post that. Do like... not send me that. I could have bought four of them at Target this You'll week. You'll get more than four. I don't want <laughs> one. Yeah, I... No, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the guys on there goes my money are also committed to uh I setting you up with do some cheaters. Not, if you want to send me something, just send me the cash. So I have pre orders I can pay for. So, so so what I'll do what I'll do is let me do my what we got this week. Then Chris, you can like <laughs> do this for the, the Patreon part. You can shuffle through people and I'll pull that together and I'll have it ready by the time we get to the, Oh, right, right. The Patreon plug. Okay. So what don't, I got this don't week. Don't forget don't forget diecast though. Oh, die! No, diecast already went. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, I went. Yeah. So, uh, what I got? Where? I, where was I? Uh, you were thinking about gears. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, what I got this week on topic? Went to Toylanta. Had a blast hanging out with Rob Springer, Joey, and Sean. Um, got a few things. Got. Um, I already had one, but I got all three Omnibots complete. So. Nice. Uh, very happy awesome. to have that. I'm awesome. still working toward getting a complete G1 set. And funny enough, most of the stuff I'm missing is like 8485, which is dumb. Hmm. That's what I'm missing. So for also, with that in mind, I also got a complete with paperwork. They had paperwork, too. But a complete with paperwork, uh, Starscream. G1 Starscream. So, cool. Yeah. Oh, that looks that looks like it's a nice shape it's a, too. It's an okay shape. It's it's an it's an it's it's played with, but it's good enough for my collection. My collection mm-hmm. is going to be pristine. And yeah. I just dropped the one of the wings fell. So <laughs> I just uh, put my nomination yep. for the uh, new wish list's name in the chat. By the way, Brian. Tfradio.net slash cheat sheet. That's what it'll be. Um, Great. <laughs> cheat spelled C H E E T. Yes. And this is something that I saw and I was going to buy it, but Sean bought it for me. It is, and we talked about this last week, the Great Car Rally. Oh! Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so. Nice. Uh, really happy with that. So Fantastic. Yeah, so, of course, that's the one that features on the last page, the Optimus Prime. Yes. Smiling face. It's wonderful. Thank you, Sean. I love the art in those books. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. It was that the, was that the one that came with the cassette or the or the uh, record? Uh, great. I don't. It's not the. It's good question. I don't remember. I don't. Th- I I honestly didn't think it came with it either. Okay. I, I mean, I, yeah. I know there was some that were just regular book books, but I could remember. I thought I that thought was. I thought this was a regular book book. I but I'm willing okay. to be wrong on that. Yeah. I I I, I want to th- say this did not have an audio component. I yeah. think that was a different series of books. Yeah. Those um, are awesome. I would love figures based on. <laughs> Just the way they looked in that series. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump to ham sandwiches. Ham sandwiches, of course, are exclusive to patrons. Patreon.com slash DF Radio. I'm going to start off 
I got the. I don't have. I can't reach the other. But I got the vamp. And it's pretty huge. Yeah, it's nice. Wow, wow. It's nice. It's it's. Yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard a lot of great things about that. I I, I probably not. I mean, it's going to go into storage. I won't open it for months, but I'm excited for when I do. And the other I got was a classified metalhead, and I love metalhead. He's one of my favorite toys and characters, even though he's from season three of GI Joe, or the Deke ser- the Deke series. I love him. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you got to get tough. And, Yo, Joe. Yeah, so I'm very happy to, to get that. So there's a lot of stuff I haven't gotten. I haven't got the Techno Viper diecast. I saw got the Techno Viper. I, I need to go back and catch up on some of that stuff. But very happy. So that to you have can pack head. it into a pack it into a container in your storage. Yep, that's exactly yep. what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to mute myself while Chris runs through everybody else. Uh, I, I'm going to go quickly with my ham sandwiches, which are not even sandwiches, but they are actually sodas. Uh, hmm. Because okay, so. Mountain Dew, you know, they do, like, uh, temporary or seasonal special flavors. So uh, they have two new varieties of Baja Blast out uh, in 20 ounces and 12 packs, I think. Um, So one is Laguna Lemonade. The other is uh, Point Break Punch. Laguna Lemonade, they call it lemonade. The fruit flavor supposedly is mango in it, and... If anything comes through, it's the mango flavor more than the lemonade. But mostly it just tastes like vaguely citrusy Mountain Dew. Hmm. Um, and like, it was not, it wasn't a gross taste, but I'm not a huge fan of like mango flavored sodas. And I kind of just wanted to see what the Mountain Dew interpretation of such a thing would be. And predictably, I was not very impressed with that. And I'm probably not going to buy it again. Um, tonight I drank my bottle of Point Break Punch, which is just, you know, a tropical fruit punch analog flavor. Um, if anyone here has drank Tahitian Treat, which is the, uh, the, uh, like the Sundrop family, I think, of, uh, Hawaiian Punch. Yeah, but carbonated. Um, the Point Break Punch tastes remarkably like that but with you know that ever-present mountain dew like underpinning uh and caffeine of course tahitian treat does not have caffeine um so that one was a little bit more enjoyable to me if anything it's a little bit too far on the sweet side which makes it even more like tahitian treat because that's that is cloyingly sweet and i can't drink a lot of that for very long because it just starts making me feel unwell um of the two flavors that's the one I'd be more likely to get again at some point if I was out somewhere and just need to pick up a quick uh, bottle of soda. At the same time, though, since most gas stations have Mountain Dew Livewire, I'd be more likely to just eschew both Baja Blast flavors and get the Livewire, which I love. Um, I don't actually like regular plain Baja Blast. Uh, I remember having that for the first time at Taco Bell when it was still exclusive to the restaurant and being like, so what's all the hype about with this? This isn't even that good. I feel and then the I same back, way. And then when I went back to refill my drink, I think I just got uh like a uh, regular Mountain Dew instead. I uh, want to be able to get the peach Mountain Dew that KFC had at home. That was pretty dang good. And see, if there's anything, if there's a fruit flavor that I dislike drinking more than mango, it's peach. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The, the KFC peach was good because it didn't have that uh, that artificial peach flavor kind of odor to it, which, you know, if you've owned cats and had litter boxes around, there's a certain similarity. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that tasted like actual peaches as opposed to artificial peach, which is why I liked it. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I don't like peaches either. I think I'm actually slightly allergic to them and nectarines. Ah, gotcha. So, I mean, you know, there's there's reasons. But yeah, uh, so that was that was our uh, soda review for this week. Um, John, why don't you run us through like a pile of Ninja Turtles or what have you that you uh, accumulated? Uh, I did get a stack of classifieds, but I haven't opened those, so I won't talk about those. I did track down, speaking of, uh, I did track down the uh, the newest iteration of uh usagi yojimbo in the neca line uh, for the cartoon ninja turtles um target exclusive line 
which uh, is part of Holothon this year. So I did stumble upon like an early stocking of um, Holothon stuff, which uh, that event doesn't start for a couple weeks. Uh, the most notable thing about this uh, this rabbit here is, um, first of all, I like him. I love him. I love that toy line. That's my favorite toy line right now um, for the last few years is that uh, cartoon Ninja Trolls line. Um, this is a uh, like an alternate version of him. I, he did not appear in the samurai armor, not exactly like this in the uh, cartoon. It's more of like a what if kind mm -hmm. of thing. Also, um, like... Neck is just now making up stuff. I swear, yeah. like, we're, 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 we're at that point, guys. It's a what if. Um, anyway, this is the ninth version of Usagi Yojimbo that I have from either this line or technically from Stan Sakai's web store. He sells like black and white versions of these molds. But uh, yeah, we're up to nine uh iterations of this guy within this toy line are you counting the four Wild. pack as individuals i i am absolutely counting the four pack. okay all right because i just for was sure because i've just got the original <laughs> the black and white and the space okay yeah but i didn't want yeah. the four pack because it's like i i don't want that many songs <laughs> so uh, i guess i did i don't know so uh <laughs> so anyway I'm, I'm up to nine i'm sure they'll squeeze a few more out but uh but i love him He's cool. He's great. Uh, but again, nine, nine uh, of these things. So uh, that's what I got that's off topic this week. <laughs> uh, Don, do you have anything actually off topic or was it just your wish list? No, I have some off topic things. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this last week or not because I'm old and my brain doesn't work, but I got Extreme Ghostbusters. You got the you did not complete that last series. Week. Oh, I did? You did not. I did not. Okay, look. Extreme Ghostbusters on DVD, legit, real. It exists. This show exists. Mm -hmm. I am glad for you and the five people who that matters to. I'm sorry. I just uh, no. Again. I I I am a fan of like obscure old stuff getting DVD releases, and there is shows from my younger days that, as far as I know, don't exist in complete DVD form that I wish I could own. Like, no, that's Kung not Fu, the old. It's what came out a couple years ago. Kung Fu, oh, I was going to say Kung Fu is definitely on DVD. <laughs> yeah, the original, the original Kung series Fu. is. Yeah, yeah, the original series definitely is. Kung Fu The Legend Continues had, for a while, I think, one of the uh, print-on-demand kind of DVD releases yeah. for the first two seasons, I think, and there was four, if I remember right, total. Yeah, sounds, sounds right. right. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, just I one example that, that I've been thinking about lately, and like I don't know why it even matters to me that much, but it's on the t on TV at the same time. Super Force, I I do have that on. on TV. I don't think I watched Super Force. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, in my in my market, <laughs> Super Force came on right before Superboy. The oh, series then that would have been before Kung Fu the Legend. Yeah. yeah, I thought. They yeah, were that's, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, I okay. I was loosely aware of Superboy when it was originally airing in syndication. Uh, Super Force, not so much. Yeah. Uh, I also got what could be now. Matt may have to back me up on this or disagree. Probably the best looking Ben Riley. Oh Scarlet, no, you're you're absolutely correct. Scarlet, this is an absolute treasure. Um, I got this from Pulse, and I got two because I bought one for a friend who I didn't know had already gotten one, but I have two. I'm not worried about that. But today they were at Target with the sale, and it's like I just got these yesterday uh... from Pulse. So anyway, but uh, absolutely stellar looking figure. The colors are vibrant. I love the hoodie. I love the design. This is probably the best retail version i'm not counting the hot toys version because that's a whole different scale but just absolutely stunning looking figure no that's that is a really nice looking like classic scarlet spider yep uh i also got Metal i don't Head. think you were actually specified verbally what you were talking about i'm sorry about. i'm sorry um i also got metalhead which i've been looking forward to i hope they do a fast draw because fast draw is my, one of my favorite gi joe's if not my favorite um I decided to get the 60th anniversary action soldier. Uh, I didn't really want the diver. I didn't realize that's out. Yeah, God, was, there's so many figures I need to get. I know. I, <laughs> I, 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 the diver looks great, but I have torpedo and a couple of eels, and I, I'm kind of good on on divers and stuff. Uh, but I did want the soldier because he's got a lot of gear and just looks really good. 
And like John, I'm probably taking away some of John's thunder. I got Quick Kick, who I've been looking forward to for a while because he just has a really great look about him. Uh, I got Big Boa. And I got... Ah, Air there's so many things I don't have. <laughs> yeah, yeah Don, the... how many things did you get? What, me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one, two Spider-Man, the three regular G.I. Joes, and the two deluxe G.I. Joes. My Techno Viper is still, for with DHL, is somewhere between here and Illinois. Uh, this so, I don't know. Me. So, Big Boa is not only, not only was being made, is out. Did, are they doing a crystal ball? I forget. I think he is not yet, but um... there is a leak list where it's being deciphered, and I think he's on the leak list. Oh crap! Unless, unless Matt, so tell broke. me I'm wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, because like the two that have always held me up on class fighter, like let me know when they do a crystal ball and a raptor. I haven't heard anything about crystal ball yet, but raptor is on the yeah raptors. List. Yeah, ah, good. Yeah, and Jinx is supposed to be shipping soon, uh, soonish, because you know, but. Pre-orders, what are they anymore? Yeah, suggestions, mostly. So, yep, yeah, yeah. and that's uh, that's all I got. Matt? Uh, no, nothing off-topic either, unless you count Jeep parts. So, wait, 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 you drive a Jeep? Yes. I didn't realize that. What kind of Jeep? A Wrangler or something? Uh, no, it's a Liberty. Okay, you don't do the ducks, do you? No. It's like brain worms. I do not get that at all. It's like it, yeah. So, Don, Wait, what I, happened? Look, at the, what, see a jeep on the road, and then look what's on the dash. Like ninety percent likely, you're going to see ducks. I, I like ducks. Well, that's weird because on the on the cruise ship, that's what Carnival does. Is you hide a duck, and then someone finds it and hides a duck. It's a it's a thing game the cruisers play on Carnival ships. We found a duck. Apparently, if, if you find a duck, it brings you luck. Okay, Matt. I, I may just be forgetting something that you talked about in detail, but what happened to that nice new car you had when you drove me to Atlanta that time? Still have it. Oh, okay. But I, I live in West Virginia and therefore need four-wheel drive occasionally as well. Okay. Makes sense. I, I was afraid something happened to your very nice car. No. I like that car a lot. That beautiful color. Um, Rob. Okay. Um, I got... I got a few things here and there. Um, uh, of course, right stuff was purchased by uh, Crunchyroll uh, last year. They are currently in the process of clearing out some of their uh, uh, older Blu-rays and things. I got the Zeta Gundam compilation movies for like $23. Hmm. So I now have a hard copy of Shar Aznable walking through a door and landing in 1985, which is yep. excellent. That is I, like, was, I was hoping you were going to reference that. I mean, how could I not? It is one of the most <laughs> inelegant jarring. segues I have ever seen in, in, a, in a movie like this. I mean, just, you know, the fact that they made a, a movie, you know, where the new footage was made 25 years after the original what was just hard enough. But yeah, uh, I, I so appreciate the Zeta Gundam renaissance those couple of years for the merchandise that it produced. You know, mm -hmm. really wonderful action figures. The movie compilations were such a bad idea. They should have just ponied up the extra yen and reanimated the entire story. They really should have, yeah. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, I also got uh, on sale uh, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection for PS4 for $30. So. Ooh. Yeah, I've been wanting to get a hold of that because, you know, I have hard copies of some of the uh, earlier ones, but mm -hmm. uh, my uh, Game Boy Advance does not have battery right now. So, ah, uh, yes, that would be a problem. Yeah. Also, just like real, uh, of uh, real, uh, like game pads are still more comfortable at this point with my bad neck and uh, shoulders and stuff. So, yeah, no, that makes sense. Anyway, those, those were such good games. My they favorite Mega Man series. That they really are. Um, I also got, uh, I finally rescued my uh, box of hobby magazines from the post office or rather <laughs> Angel, Angel did it for me, for which I am very grateful. Um, nothing like earth shaking in these, uh, no like early designs or anything, you know, not that recognizable, uh, anything, you know, fun like that. Uh, some interesting line art here and there, some uh, photos of merchandise I did not know existed there was apparently a very robust line of Dr. Slump model kits in 
Um, I also got a 1983 Bandai uh, model catalog, incidentally. That's hmm. uh, that in really good shape too. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the only uh, thing Gundam wise I learned is that that early Mark II design with the yellow frame around the uh, lower half of the shield. Uh, apparently, they made a Chogokin of that. So I may have to go hunting for that because I want to take a closer look. Um, beyond that, the last thing I got was the third and I presume final uh, Witch Mercury figureized standard kit. Uh, the character Choo Choo is known for basically uh, uh, pun- uh, punching racists dead in the face whenever she uh, encounters them. So, you know, fan she did. She did seem like, like the already. best character early on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, her ridiculous pom pom hair is uh, actually has articulated joints. So I'm midway through building that and enjoying it quite a bit. But uh, that is, I think, I think that's it. And then we make diecast wait until the end. That's because I'm falling asleep, isn't it? Yes, that actually was (laughs) what went through my head. I wanted to see if we could make diecast fall asleep before he told us what he got off topic. This week Um, on topic, I I do have some. I do have some news, <laughs> some Transformers breaking news before we uh, go into what I got. Uh, Transformers Angry Birds just updated with new war characters, new war season 25, an optimized experience. I don't know that I've played Transformers Angry Birds in, in years. I had no idea it was still a thing and it was still updating. Yeah. But that's that's some breaking news for you if you want. I got all the G.I. Joes Don talked about. So including the the diver, because I, I've just been all in on those G.I. Joe classified figures. I, I got three Techno Vipers because uh, they're purple and they're cool. And uh, I like them. I got a bunch of Mythic Legions figures uh, from Toy-Con up in New Jersey. Uh, over the weekend because four horsemen were there um and you know they were they were super nice to me they uh they i just started collecting the line so i was talking to them about the figures i got and everything and uh they might actually invite me up to check out their facility and stuff like that so it's oh, that's pretty cool. cool oh nice yeah um super excited about that and then uh Boy, there's there's probably a ton of stuff I'm forgetting. Uh, the G.I. Joe, you know, the vamp, I actually took that out of the box and put that thing together. And that is an awesome vehicle. I really like the vamp. Um, man, it really makes me want them to do a Raven like so bad. That would be so that, big. That will be a has <laughs> that will be your name. That will be your They've done the strike. I don't for, even think they can do that for Haslab. You know, they've done a sky striker. That will be Well, the Raven split, so one one Haslab will be half the jet, the other half will be the other half of the jet, and then you get the figures in the third. Yeah, but uh, I mean the Raven I I saw at toy, you know, it's always at a toy show. Um when you go and I feel like maybe if they just modified the Raven and made it a, a one person, they could upscale it a little bit. It wouldn't have to be super, super big. Um, they they would have they can do a little modification to that and make it work and still make it look like the Raven and just be a little bit bigger. But I'll be honest, I cast, I think as well as classified as doing, they might can actually just do a regular Raven with good stretch goals, like the right figures, the right effects parts, and it will still fund. It, I think classify would have to take a major misstep. They, they'd have to pull a rancor, I think at this point to get people to really not want to back the project. I would, e- I would even do a three, three, seven, five Raven, like they did the sky striker. But I think that three seven five line is kind of dead right now. So, well, Funko's um, doing them. Yeah, so but, it's dead is what we're saying. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm just gonna end it. I, I can't even think what else I got. But um, that's all I got this week. 
Brian, are you done with your housekeeping? Yeah. So, is, did we cover everybody? Yes. Cool, thanks. So, guess what? If you go to tfradio.net slash cheat sheet, tfradio.net slash c-h-e-e-t cheat sheet cheat sheet cheat spelled that way for cheetor there's a special amazon wish list that goes to don and it never takes off anything you buy on it and the only thing on it core class cheetor and the cool okay thing, and the cool thing is you can add anything to your cart and it'll go to don as well so <laughs> It's not. It won't just send. You you have the option to send him other things as well. So if you want to send him some Cadbury eggs, I think he or, would love those. Or a coffin. Or or coffee. No like, coffin. Yeah, coffee. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Because Christy has uh, foreboded the uh, coffin. But I would like to say, everyone, please do not send me those Cheetos. Please. I don't want them. Please, Please I send will, them. No. I will. I will make money on them somehow. And your hard-earned money. If you want to send me Didn't something, we send that me. You would donate them to Toys for Tots. I thought. <sighs> but I like kids. Why so, would I want to give them that toy? So, 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 Don, you're saying your wife has decoffinated you? Oh man, that's a good one too. That is a, that is a good one. I will I will I will give you an I will give you a clap for that. No, but yeah, seriously, people, do not do not send me that toy. I don't want it. I, I could have bought four of them at Target to yesterday and chose not to. Dot net slash cheat sheet. And See, Don, the whole point of the Amazon wish list is for things that like you would never buy for yourself. That you no really one, want. No <laughs> one should buy that. No one should. Buy, I mean, I know. Okay, Brian, you said the other day on Twitter that I have a rational hatred of some things. The reason I have a hatred for that figure because Supreme Cheetor encompasses every figure that I wish I had never bought. It's it's a representation of every figure. All the Energon crap I wish I never bought. All the Beast Machine stuff I wish I never bought. Well, you're not buying all this. the I know, but I but I'm saying though, it's not a rational fear if it's the embodiment of everything you hate and you're justified so. Um I think psychologically that might still count as an irrational fear. Tfradio.net slash cheat sheet. And that is an affiliate link. I'm not gonna that if you buy something off that, not only will it help Don out, it'll help help us out. So yeah, yeah, this is this is not uh, you know Elf on a Shelf Warmer. This is not a charitable act. This is but uh... Don should. <laughs> this is fight. Now this is a hundred percent pure homegrown <laughs> if you really, fight. If you really want to piss Don off, also add like the CD that has Ice Ice Baby on it. Yes. <laughs> And a death's head too. And a death's and head too. Forget and, this. And, I'm going to do my own podcast with blackjack, blackjack and something and else. And something else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I can't have the second part because I'm married. So there's that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, it doesn't okay. mean it doesn't mean you can't have them as guests. That's true. You could like yeah. you can befriend them and talk them into like a different, or they could, you're not not even like into a different occupation. Maybe you could just come to a mutual understanding and like. You know, I think I always think that engaging people is is, is a good thing. TFRadio.net slash cheat sheet. Okay. I want to thank our patrons at patreon.com slash TFRadio. Uh, patrons get an ad free version of the show. And there will be one, actually, yeah, there's always an ad free version of the show. You get it a day early. It doesn't mean 24 hours, but you get it a day early. Higher bit rate. Uh, weekly Patreon exclusive pre show podcast. I should move the stuff around because the pertinent thing here is unedited episodes of RFC. And there's going to be a slight edit this week. So the Patreon version will be a little bit longer than the uh, public version of the show. But both of them are going to be pretty long this week. Yeah, they're gonna, both going to be long. We're, we, we are bumping up against two hours right now. And yeah, it's... I don't know why! It's not <laughs> like there was a ton of news. Um, no, but we sure talked about a few things for a while. That's true. Like the beer. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and writing. You get yeah. There Goes My Money, the podcast, which is edited by Chris, thankfully, not me. So it won't yeah. just come out. Yeah. You get the week early. P 
patrons at the touch tier get to be on There Goes My Money. Uh, and it's re- it's recorded twice monthly. A new episode was posted just today to the Patreon feed. And if you want to get it early, you should sign up. But uh, it'll be available in the public feed next week. Again, patrons at the touch tier you get to be on that. And starting with the next recorded episode, we'll have a new touch patron on it. So I'm excited about that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, touch patrons get to be mentioned on the show each week and listed at tfradio.net slash credits, which I'm doing right now. Kevin Dorsey, Jacob Owen Lucia, Sean Bratton, Emmett Stresovich, Hector Bones, Jay Klein Rye, Joey Russell, who I got to hang out with this week. Uh, here's why it's cool. Rabbits. Rick Mahurin, Ryan Bona, Sean Hamilton, who all I also got to hang out with, Sean Williamson, and Spider Bob. And uh, Sean Bratton, Boomer, said that he's going to try to go to Toylana next year. So that's awesome. Can't wait to meet. Can't wait to meet him. Um, so you can find everything that we do at tfradio.net. It's all there, going back 25 years, which is scary. If you listen to old episodes, one, I'm sorry. I was like 19. And, I was 15 and uh, 16. Uh, no, I was 20. I was 20. Yeah. And, and I need to go back and listen because there are people who were on the show that I forgot that they exist. It was that long ago. Um, I really need to go back and like do really good tight show notes for those. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's going to happen that's, at all. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Uh, you can find everything I do at briankilby.com. I am on Blue Sky at kilby.bsky.social. And I need to go back and record some more episodes of Happy Daily. Like, I've had a bad stretch for the last few weeks, so I haven't really been in the mood for it. But hopefully uh, I'll, I'll get some more episodes out soon. Uh, John DeLuna is here. John, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, still that John D everywhere, everywhere. Uh, Rob Springer, not here. He is at zonebase.org at zonebase.bsky.social. Robo Rob Springer on Twitter. And he said he will start posting more episodes of Transform Squadron. He's just, uh, it's just not had the opportunity to do it. So he'll get back on that soon. So I'm excited about that. Diecast, how do people get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me on Blue Sky and Twitter at Diecast2. They can like my Facebook page at Reviews by Diecast, and they can see my reviews at youtube.com slash RFC Reviews. Cool. Uh, Don can be found at tfradio.net slash cheat sheet. And also, yes. Don, how else how can people get a hold of you? Well, after I commit heinous crimes and I'm in back in that re-up in Butner, which was the local insane asylum. I can be found on Twitter at HMRC, the number four EVR. I can also be found on Blue Sky, although I am very still not using it at all. I just haven't got there much. Uh, HMRC for EVR.bluesky.social. I also have an Amazon wish list, which this version is thankfully cheaterless at TF. Ra- yeah, well, uh, TFradio.net slash dot list. Matt? Uh, Melvar.bsky.social. That's with three L's and two R's. Cool. Rob? Uh, I'm on robflails.bsky.social. That is ostensibly connected to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash flailthroughs, which covers mostly Gundam games. Uh, monthly update for Gundam Battle Operation 2 happens tonight. The uh, uh, This time we're getting the new Gundam Heavy Weapon System. <laughs> and... Uh, Thursday morning, there will likely be the update video and a test drive video of that. And uh, uh, if you like what I do over there, patreon.com slash flail throughs will let you support that, make specific requests in the Gundam games I play, uh, phrasing it that way in advance for when Gundam Breaker 4 shows up. And uh, I also have a wish list that benefits the show at tfradio.net slash playlist. Chris. Uh, Chris RTXB on Blue Sky. My photography work, you can find the record of that at playwithphotography.com. I have an Amazon wish list, which also benefits the show at tfradio.net slash Chris list. And of course, you can find me in our Discord at tfradio.net slash Discord, which is honestly the best place to talk about Transformers and other nerd topics. Uh, great group of regulars in there come join us hang out we're there all week it's not just show nights but show nights you especially want to be there 
because we read along with our Discord and often interact with our live audience. It's a it's a really good time for everybody. Yeah, totally agree. John, so great to have you back this week. Can't wait to to, to do this on the regular again. Good to be back. Thank your, you. Your uh, for the people watching the video, your toy collection looks really nice behind you. Although I do miss the arcade. It's probably a different <laughs> angle. Well, I can twist the camera. I can, I can, I can mix it up, guys. Oh, uh, every week. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Where, where in the Stay world tuned. is John DeLuna? Yeah. That's right. He is at tfradio.net slash cheat sheet. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Recording so stuff. Even though that was like five hours, it didn't feel like five hours to me. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, I no, was actually, no. I was surprised. I was surprised we were getting for the start of ham sandwiches and it was already like five to nine my time and it's not like it's not it's not john like no, it, no. yeah so i don't know why i don't know why it went so much longer maybe because i just needed a outlet i don't know but um that'll do it yeah no so. it was it was a perfectly fun it was a very entertaining show i was very you know i did not feel like my time was being impinged upon and if i don't then our audience probably in enjoyed what we recorded too and so once, like i think i yeah, think we're good once i trim it down some, and i was be... building a model kit the whole time so Ooh, oh, nice which one <laughs> keep it eye awesome. out oh nice uh tiger megazord i'm yeah. gonna run welcome back john cool good night diecast hey you Take i'm care. out of here too oh bye, bye john oh, thanks bye, for being john. here Take care, john bye. see you soon welcome back yeah welcome hey. back but but don i am right right the the original fire dagwon toy the police car that came with that was much bigger in proportion to the jet toy right yeah yeah the yeah. um the the um the toy still fit inside the jet yeah the i remember that yeah but the difference is the front folded down yes i remember and the yeah so yeah they just did that this is i think they're trying to go for the close to the perfect transformation mm -hmm. effect uh-huh so but they could engineer all that into the chest and make the car because I guess scale, that would be about right. Yeah, probably. But uh, yeah. But I tell you, this this Spider Man is just one of the. That's Scarlet one of the, Spider, the real one, the real Spider Man. That's one of the <laughs> best. That's one of the best. And my tech, it's weird. My Techno Viper is coming by DHL from Hasbro. And it's still somewhere in Illinois four days later. That's, okay. that's the th deal with my animated Optimus Prime, my Voyager. It's, that's DHL e-commerce, which is not the magic DHL. Well, it's it's their smart post from what Basically, I... Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I ordered it from Hasbro Pulse. I don't understand why it's coming that way. Yeah, because, I mean, I've the only time Gee. I think... The only thing I yeah. got DHL was when I ordered from Suguri, Sagaya. And I got, not, I got the Japanese version of uh, Nightshade. In like three days from that's Japan. because yeah, that's yeah. DHL International Express, which is the magic DHL. Domestic DHL is hot garbage. Yeah, <laughs> international. I, I garbage. guess that's why when I bought when I bought Armada Unicron from KB Toys online, when I lived nine minutes up the road, it went <laughs> all the way to Roanoke back yeah, to that Greensboro. Was, that was what FedEx you said? No, that was DHL. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it went. It went. Nine mile. I live nine miles away from the warehouse. Yeah, it went to Roanoke, which was two hours away. It went to Greensboro, which was another three hours away from Roanoke and two mm -hmm. hours from me or so, and then it was back up to me. So it took a week to go nine miles. Oh, mean, fun. Mean, meanwhile, Big Bad only handed off Gears and Starscream to FedEx on Monday, and I haven't already. Nice. Well, well mine's in my pile of loot. Uh, I wanted to ship it because. They had, uh, I, I, I had there was they had one of their daily sales. They had that uh, Polly Stone uh, Prince Adam figure mm -hmm. that was re re it's on sideshow right now on the wait list for one seventy nine, and they had it for one oh seven. I paid like fifteen dollars for my Prince Adam. I don't know what you're doing wrong. Well, no, no, <laughs> it's, it's it's a statue, Brian. It, it's oh. it's that's what he's doing wrong. He's buying statues. Hey, people, well, watch live. I'm going to end the stream because it's late. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off of here as soon as we're off stream okay. too because I got I gotta okay. go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's getting late bye for Twitch. me too. And in a second, I'm saying bye YouTube as soon as I can. Good night, everybody. Take care, all. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for hanging Take with care. us so long. Damn it! Where's the flipping link for YouTube? <laughs> uh, podcast. Here we go. Okay.
I'm going to like turn into a pumpkin or pass out here in a second. Uh, I'm going to watch some Star Trek. Oh, that's a good idea. I got to wait till the gun update at 1 a.m. Wait, 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 wait. When is Discovery start? It's an 